what do I do? I'm married to this person now and he thinks this is how my body works and this Mm -hmm. is what I like and how am I supposed to rewind 20 years of that experience and say like, I changed my mind. Psych. Of girls gotta eat. Welcome back, <laughs> Reina. You have been a naughty girl. You cuff me, baby. <laughs> This is so funny. We just have our handcuffs sitting in between us. It's cute. Do you want to handcuff them together? Yeah. We you linked together forever. Look at your purple nails they match. We have to be like this the whole episode now. Man, this is cute. If this you're not attention. watching on YouTube, you should be. I'm but Rain and I are going to be cuffed up this whole this whole episode. This is going to be. Can we do it? I don't think we can do it. This is so weird for me. <laughs> I don't mind it. You don't like it. But then I get going too much with my hands. It makes me feel closer to you. (laughs) I don't get to touch you that often. Okay. Okay. We'll take them off. We'll We'll talk talk about about it later. Yeah. But we are back from Thanksgiving. I always find a way to bring it up. You know. Well, we are going to talk about it because we recorded our last week's episode before we left. So we're going to recap it a little bit. I have to say that this year I did get some tea and drama from people. You did? I got people sending me like some stuff about their family and I'm just going to kick it off with my favorite one. I already sent this to you and Tessa, what? but I got a DM that said Thanksgiving tea. My uncle was just fired from his job for attending the January 6th insurrection. <laughs> that is such a tea. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody in the extended family knew he was there. We were shook. <laughs> Imagine getting fired for something in 2023 that you did in 2021. I mean, Yes, I like actually think I need to go back three in three years ago with her and get more information. Like, like how did it how did surface? This was three years ago. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> that is some good ass tea. Well, I love it. Fuck your uncle. Seriously, <laughs> I I got tons of tags of Thanksgiving yeah. beige plates. It was very sweet. And people really. Oh, some years they tag me real small. This year it was just like beige plates and big emblazoned across the screen. This one's for Raina. Yeah, it was just very like and lot. not for Ashley. <laughs> and, and it's like and none for Gretchen Wieners. Like it was really. I got tagged in one like a pity tag, but it was really like because then I would go in and see the girls got to eat tags, and I was like, damn, we've been getting tagged a lot. Not me. We were getting like private submissions. Sparkle eyes submitted him to me it was good it was a good one little curry on there yeah. looked nice curry looked nice thanksgiving curry <laughs> <laughs> okay let's thank our partners we'll jump right back into it we'd like to thank skims for supporting our show skims is creating the next generation underwear loungewear and shapewear available in cheerful colors and festive prints at skims.com plus get free shipping on orders over 75 dollars all at skims.com and thanks to HelloFresh for supporting GGE. Go to HelloFresh.com slash GGE free and use the code GGE free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. Yes. And thanks to Hinge for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. On Hinge, there are no rules, timers, or games. If you're feeling inspired, give Hinge a try. Download Hinge today and find someone worth deleting the app for. And thanks to Buffy for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Buffy makes award-winning bedding that's soft on you and soft on the earth for $20 off your Buffy order. Visit Buffy.co and enter promo code GGE. And we'd like to thank Nutrafol for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve visible thickness and strength. Go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code GGE to save $10 off your first month subscription plus free shipping on every order. This today is like the all-star lineup. Like what? It's just like my whole life. It's so I mean, aside from Hinge, but we still talk about Hinge all the time last week's episode. This is just crazy. It's like I've had my HelloFresh for lunch. I took my Nutrafol today. My slept on my Buffy stuff. I'm wearing a Skims bra. We went and recorded Heather DeBro's podcast today and I would drive to your house to pick up your HelloFresh lunch to go to my house. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to forget those leftovers. It was nice. Well, we have a really exciting episode for you guys today. We're talking about faking orgasms. Ugh. So just to kick it off in the beginning, we have a lot of announcements and fun stuff. We have orgasm announcements, but we're just going to knock this out one by one real quick. GGE, we released a whole new merch line with Girls Gotta Eat because I didn't really want to spend time with my family at Thanksgiving. I figured <laughs> I would just, you know, I would just sit inside and work on this all day, every day. But Ashley and Tessa were so, helpful and we have released a whole new line we have what doing hats we has to be honest i'm horny mugs we have great just classic gge maroon green sweatshirts uh the crew necks are really flying we have established in 2018 oh yes i i almost 
forgot about them because we did like a well. New York City and then a Los Angeles line mm-hmm. for those bi-coastal besties or just wherever you live. Just, mm-hmm. you know, I love it. And then we have like a property of kind of like an athletic style. But yes, Rain and I collaborate on a lot of these creative ideas and then Rain really manages the whole thing. So I just want to shout you out. You really spent a lot of time and effort into getting this up because here's what Raina says. I go, I don't care, Raina. I cannot add this to my plate. And then you go, well, you do this all the time and then you do care. You are going to care. You are going to care. That's what you said. You are going to care. Every year. I'm like, you're going to care. Because I'm just like, I can't add it to my plate. And you're like, but you do care. And I'm like, you are right. <laughs> like, I can't just be like, just do whatever. Because then I'll be like, actually, no, I hate this. I have to, I have feedback. I have ideas. But the established 2018 was like totally your idea. I think it's like so cute. I thank love you. it. It's, it's really very cute. Just, thank you. Our friend Rob said that on your grave is going to say just one more thing. <laughs> Actually, just one more thing, Hustle Time. You do just have like just one more idea. Just one more thing. So that is all available at girlsgotteat.com. The deadline to order for holiday shipping, like guaranteed, as much guaranteed as we can, is December 11th. So sign up for our newsletter, girlsgotteat.com, and we'll maybe do another sale before this is up. But, you know, you got to check that newsletter and (laughs) sign up and just enjoy it. We're excited to provide this for you. And it's been selling really, really well. Yes, it's really fun. We haven't had new merch in a while, so we're excited for those of you who are excited about it too, that really wanted some new stuff. Also new is my iPhone. She finally made it, guys. She's finally here. I I had the iPhone 12 for years. I literally can't believe it. And I got the 15 Pro Max. You know, I'm a Pro Max girly. Welcome. 512 gigs. You you probably don't relate to this. So my, I got the iPhone. We both got the same one. The Pro Max is so lightweight, but I don't know that you would know that because you didn't have the 13 and the 14, which were like a brick. (laughs) Rainy, you sent me the funniest (laughs) text and you were like, this 15 is so good. Not that you have anything to compare it to. (laughs) Give us this passive aggressive dig. But you, you were right. I mean, what are you feeling? So I love it. I had that 12 for so long. I do feel like... That was my favorite of all my babies. It's the I thing really, I most... I really had a good time with my 12. I don't get it. It's the thing I most don't relate to about your personality. Because, like, nothing about the rest of your personality is like, let me hang on to I a know. phone for four generations. It's just kind of, look, if it's not broke, don't fix it kind of thing. But, like, you do start to realize... Like we shot this video with my dad for Vibes Only. My dad did another reaction video to the Debbie. It was very funny. And I had to be like, Matt, we have to shoot it on your phone. You know, I don't like being like, we have to always use someone else's phone because mine's not as good. It's the thing that that it makes no sense with you. So girls got your podcast. I shop for the merch and (laughs) apple.com for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. (laughs) Okay. And now (laughs) vibesonly.com for a plethora of new things for you. We do. It's I'm, we're so excited. Like this has been such a long run road to really launch all this new stuff. Like this is the second installment of our new shit for the holidays. <laughs> we did the Debbie and the blow gels and now we have the handcuffs and the Lucy too. You guys, these are so exciting. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let well, you, you talk like, about you, the like handcuffs. You don't own the company. Yeah, so the first thing, it's just an accessory for your collection. We have released silicone handcuffs and this bitch learned how to say silicone. <laughs> <laughs> They are a dark shade of purple. We're in our purple era at this company, but (laughs) I think it's a really nice way to just ease into kink. They don't look as intimidating as like a metal handcuff and they slide on really easily to your wrists. If you like dainty little wrists like me and Ashley, and this is obviously good for men or women, but it's just a fun way to incorporate a little bit of kink and spice into your sexual repertoire. Mm -hmm. So they're nice and soft. The silicone is so, so soft. And we did this dark, deep purple color. So it looks really really chic and it's just a fun thing to whip out on yeah. Friday night or a Monday morning, whatever you want to get a little naughty. Yeah. And you can do whatever you want with these, except the warning labels. Crazy. We did like, we had to deal with a lawyer. lawyer for all this stuff. You can't put them on your feet. Do not have them around children. <laughs> They're not meant for your feet, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you could just have these on with your hands above your head, hands behind you, right behind your butt. And then you can also obviously put these around a bedpost if you have a bed like that. You know, which is, I don't really have like a bed, like post, you Uh know what I mean? But obviously these could just go around the bed post and you kind of be bound to the top of the bed, which is like a good way to to do that. that. But they're just kind of fun. They're, they're sexy. Like this is a good thing to buy for your partner. 
I think it's a great gift, especially if, you know, they might be wanting to get into some kinkier stuff, but it's also a great thing to buy and then send a photo to your partner. Oh, like, right. I remember the first time I sent a picture of these to Sparkle Eyes, he was like, whoa, what just are like we a, doing? Yeah, that what are we doing tonight? panties on the bed. Yes. Love it. Yes. And if you're just the kind of person that maybe doesn't love the idea of never being able to get out of a handcuff that locks, yeah. you can slip out of these if totally. you need to. So it makes you feel a little safer, maybe with a newer partner. And they are really soft. So if you don't like the feeling of like metal on your wrist, mm-hmm. the silicone is really nice and yeah. soft. Yes. So someone who's been arrested a bunch of times like it is triggering for me you know? yeah and like, totally maybe you have an arrest record yeah, and it's it, too yeah. triggering real handcuffs like real police handcuffs are heavy scary right these are yeah. really nice and lightweight yeah. and they look chic <laughs> So check that out. That is at vibesonly.com and our newest toy. Yes. So we released the original Lucy last year, Thanksgiving Eve, I believe, and we sold out of it. So this is our Lucy 2. And what the Lucy is, is that it's our bullet, our most petite, compact vibrator. You have your bullet, and then this is going to have the purple button, which I love. And like when you have the bullet and then you turn on, it like glows purple, which I love so much. So, you know, you could put the bullet on your body. It's safe to do that. So that's one option, but this is really meant to go with one of our silicone sleeves. And so we had two sleeves with the Lucy OG and we did the finger sleeve again in a different color, this beautiful like purple color and this slips right on the bullet and your partner can use it. And it's just kind of like they have a vibrating finger for you. You can use it on yourself too, but we love this as a partner toy. And then two new sleeves. I'm showing if you're watching on YouTube, but this is like little bunny ears. That's going to like hit the clit really soft, squishy and malleable. And that's going to just sit right on top of the bullet. It's the cutest thing ever. It's like a little bunny. I love it. And the button is purple and the sleeves are all purple. Yes. Three shades of purple. And then just like a mini wand head. Just kind of have this flat, but yet still squishy, but firm, darkest purple. That's just going to turn your bullet into like a mini wand, essentially. So you have three different vibes here. No pun intended. Uh I've never seen anybody do this before. It makes really like your vibrator so versatile. So essentially you're buying four vibrators in one. one. Truly, I've never seen anybody do this before. And again, the last one came with two sleeves. This comes with three sleeves, all new purple shades. So if you have the last one, this is going to be different for you. Yes. And it's just a really fun gift to give to somebody. The packaging is beautiful. And if also you're just like, I want to spice up my sex life, let's try all three of these different vibes. Yes. These are so great to use with a partner. And like you said, so great for gifts. So these are great for bachelorette gifts. They're mm-hmm. so fun. It's a really reasonably priced package. This is like our least expensive toy that we sell. And you get four vibrators in one. So it's like, what are we doing? Yeah. We're just giving this shit away, basically. I feel like you robbed a bank. <laughs> it's basically free for you it's guys. It's basically free. <laughs> and we just, again, love the new color scheme. And so you guys are going to love the Lucy 2. All of our stuff, by the way is great as gifts. The packaging is really luxurious and high end and discreet. So when you get the packaging in the mail, it just says VO company. So you don't Mm -hmm. have to worry about anybody like your dad or your cousin seeing it. Well, speaking of your dad, we had my dad do his first (laughs) unboxing reaction video to the Lucy last year, because as you guys may or may not know, the Lucy I named it because it would be what I would name my daughter if I was going to have kids. So this really is one that's like my child. So we named it the Lucy. My dad reacted to it last Thanksgiving. People loved it on Instagram. And we did it this year with the Debbie. My dad is a fucking star, dude. I can't believe he didn't like plan those lines. What I have no idea. And you know, you're like, when you have something that like you do once and people really love it, you're like, how can you recreate that magic? Didn't prep at all. He didn't see the toy. He was ready. He had his pocket knife. I was upset that I took the plastic wrap off of it because I would have liked to have him rip it open with his pocket knife. He sat there and I was like, how are we going to outdo last year's? He is just out of the gate. Looks like an ashtray. Looks like an ashtray. (laughs) I wasn't even funny because I can't prepare for it. I have no idea what he's going to say. My brother's filming it. Try not to laugh. (laughs) He said the shot back. I mean, I I tee him up for some of these lines, but you guys have to go watch this. It's on my Instagram and I collabed it with Vibes Only. He's just such a pro. I mean, you never know what he's going to do. I know. And I'm like, he's drunk. He's not going to come up with anything. No, he's he's funnier with age and alcohol. He was like, last year he was like drinking, swirling his wine. This was 10 (laughs) a.m. Was he drinking? No. (laughs) Like he was just first thing in the morning, just up and at him. One take. Your dad's an icon. We, we got the shot. I love him so much. He really crushed it. And I have to say, I have been using it, Rain. It's unbelievable. Ashley, I'm t- I told you. Yeah, Ashley, it's, I have a problem. I know. I was using one vibrator this morning and I stopped and walked across the room and got the Debbie. Yes. The hole is so big. It vacuums and up. Your I'll tell you what, clit. you might be thinking like, well, what if I can't get my clit in the hole and how do I do it? It'll find it. Oh, it'll find your clit. It'll find- 
Sometimes I just it's like, like key metal up in my belly button and it's just like <laughs> it's like a metal detector on the beach. It'll find it. It will gravitate towards your clit and it will suck it up and then all of a sudden you're screaming. I like how you I black out I like hollered last night. <laughs> Thank you. I've been waiting for you to get it. I tell you, I black out from the orgasm from that toy. It's outrageous. So as my dad would call it, the shop vac of vibrators. Get your little Debbie. Oh, and then he was like, I, sometimes I eat a little Debbie. He has one liner. He's really funny and quick. I love him. He's our marketing plan. <laughs> Speaking of family, so I did give a Debbie to my sister-in-law at the Thanksgiving. So I brought some toys home. I love that. And my brother and sister-in-law are staying in my mom's basement. And my mom's redoing the basement. And the bedroom, there's three rooms kind of railroad style. There's doors on each side. Mm-hmm. But the bedroom's in the center of the three rooms. So my brother Arlen and Adrienne are staying in the middle room. So everybody's upstairs. My dad, my stepdad, my mom. And I'm like, this is a safe time to give my sister-in-law the vibrator. <laughs> so I go... <laughs> <laughs> so I go downstairs and I'm like, can I use the downstairs? So I have like the suck and blow gel for her in sugar cookie because she has a sweet tooth. And okay. I give her the Debbie and she opens it up and she's like, this is so cool. This is whatever. So she's looking at it and from one side of the room, my stepdad walks in. She has the vibrator and he's like, what is that? What's going on here? I was like, it's one of our vibrators. Can you get the fuck out of here? Just get out of here. Nobody wants you here. So he like turns around and leaves the room. And then in the other door from the other side of the room, my dad comes in and he's like, what are you guys doing here? And Adrian's like, Brandon just gave me a vibrator. My dad's like, the packaging looks so nice on that one. I was like, how did you guys get, get the fuck out of here? Both of you leave. No one invited you here. My dad doesn't even live here. Why are you That's in the basement so of a funny. house that you don't live in? That is so insane. I can't, this scene is wild. There's two Two dads. There's like, you're just trying to give a vibrator away. Two dads come down. My dad doesn't live there. My parents were divorced for 35 years. Why are you in the basement? Sniff it out. They have like a radar for like an awkward moment. (laughs) That was really funny for me. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's take a quick break and then we will get right back into it. We have so much more to share. So I am so excited to talk about Nutrafol. I love Nutrafol so much. I have talked about this before, but I have had a lot of hair thinning and shedding in recent months due to hormonal changes. I've seen a dermatologist about it. It's been upsetting. You know, I've talked about this on my Instagram as well. And so I've really been relying on Nutrafol to help with this. And I have noticed a difference. I have noticed my hair, like getting back to where it needs to be. And I really feel like this is going to be what gets me back there. My dermatologist recommended it. My hairdresser recommended it because she noticed the the thinning and the shedding as well. So if this is something that you're dealing with, or even if you're not, even if you're just like, I wish I had visibly thicker hair, I wish I was shedding less, this could be the solution for you. So you're going to take your four capsules a day, super easy. And it really targets the root causes of whatever you're dealing with, because it could be stress. It could be hormones. They really do have their formulas to target anything that could be going on in all stages of life from postpartum to menopause. No matter your life stage, they have, again, the four unique formulas to support women. And each is physician formulated using drug-free science-backed ingredients so you get the most reliable results. It is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve visible thickness and strength. So this has been something that I have been using off and on since 2020, but I've been so reliant on it as of late because of what I have been dealing with. And what I'm dealing with is like not a permanent thing. It's just just like what I'm dealing with right now. And I feel like Nutrafol again is like helping get me back to that healthy hair growth from within and targeting what's going on with me. Again, it could always be your environment, your nutrition, your lifestyle, your metabolism. They really tackle that whole body health. So you can get your hair to like a thicker, stronger, longer place. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol women's hair growth supplement for six months. So it can take a little bit of time, but their website is really cool. They'll tell you kind of like what to expect month one to two, what to expect month three to four, what to expect month five to six and beyond. So you really can know that once you start committing to it and getting those monthly deliveries, you're like doing something really good for yourself and for your hair. And our hair as women is just so important. Like one in two women experience hair thinning and it's just like, it can really affect how you like view yourself, Mm -hmm. you know? So this is something we talk about all the time. So you can take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code GGE. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code GGE. That's Nutrafol.com promo code GGE. 
Yes, and if you are looking for the perfect holiday gifts for literally everybody on your list, your sister, your mom, your dad, your boyfriend, best friend, pets, it is Skims. I pets. literally live in this stuff. Skims is creating the next generation of loungewear for everybody. It is just everything is soft. Everything is high quality. The colors are beautiful. There's so much to choose from. They have a huge range of sizes. I love the packaging that it comes in. Uh, if you want to do like a cozy night by the fire, if you want to walk around feeling sexy, feeling yourself around the house in loungewear, Skims, even the dog. This is new know. to me. I thought I knew everything there was to know about Skims. I didn't is know. could be wearing Skims? Mm -mm. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Put them in Skims. So there's lots of stuff. In prepackaged Skims holiday boxes, just like ready to go. The collections are beautiful. I picked so much stuff. So recently I got the cotton jersey scoop bralette in red and soot color. I love like their red and pink shades they're doing. I know. So I posted a picture of me and my Skims, like boy shorts and the scoop bralette. If you look on my Instagram again, you, Ash has, it's like the last photo of this like fall fashion kind of carousel I did. But I think you can only get that red in like the packs, like the two pack of the bras, at least uh -huh. now on their site, or like the five pack, which is such a good gift for yourself or someone else. The way it comes is so cute. So cute. It's like the perfect packaging. And I got the Fits Everybody Boy Short five pack in these shades of pink, flamingo, ruby. And also like this stuff is so high quality. I literally wore their boy short underwear on stage at a live show in LA yeah. as my pants. Yeah. Well, and you know what I want to try is Ray and I both have the boxer brief, like the women's boxer brief. Yeah. It has like the waistband and then it comes with this like little tank, which is so sexy to like sleep in, wear around. But I saw that they I styled the it on their Instagram, like with wide like jeans over it. So you could see like the waistband kind of like a boxer and then the like tank as your shirt with like a big jacket or a shirt over it. I'm like, I'm trying this look. It's like sexy 90s vibes. I love that. I know. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> they have tons of collections. They fits everybody cotton, soft lounge, and sleep. And now all available in cheerful colors and festive prints. Like I mentioned, the sizing really, really vast. So they have double X small to four X. Do I say that weird? Do you say like XX small? Extra, extra small. Double X small. That works. <laughs> Triple X. <laughs> extra, extra small to four X and unisex styles. And they start at newborn sizing for children's styles. So Skim makes holiday shopping so easy with styles for everyone in the family. Skim's holiday gift shop is the destination for all your gifting needs. Believe the hype. Skim's is over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Skim's holiday gift shop is now open at skims.com. Plus get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know that we sent you so that they keep funneling their underpants to us. <laughs> just that's not part of the ad rate. Select podcast in the survey and be sure to select our show and the drop down menu that follows. And just you guys will truly love it so much. <laughs> okay. One more new thing to tell you about. Then we have like some funny stuff, but we have a brand new vibes only website. Yes. It is gorgeous. We have worked on this very hard. It is beautiful. But why do you care about it? I will tell you. It is a better shopping experience. Mm -hmm. I just love how the toys are all laid out. And there's even more information about every single thing on the site and what the packaging looks like and every function of it. There's a whole app page telling you how to's on how to use different functions in the app that we have, like the long distance function. And it is tremendously beautiful, really chic in hand. And we have a blog section now spearheaded by Tessa. Yeah. Tessa, do you want to come over and join us on the couch? <laughs> you guys turn on YouTube. This is Tessa's first time on the podcast. Yes. So welcome to Tessa. You've heard her in the background for the last eight, nine months. <laughs> this is a Sorry. lot. We, we, didn't wanna, we didn't feel like setting up the other camera. So Tessa's just like with us on the couch. No, we, we put her in the middle. Space. She's like our daughter, but she's taller than me. <laughs> so Tessa has been with us almost a year now. Yeah. We Maybe met you. January. When was the holiday show in New York? I think the 15th of, of December. December. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've known you for a year. Probably, yeah. yeah. My first interview was probably like almost exactly a year ago. And you've done almost 40 live shows this year. And you're going to close out the year at the Beacon with 3,000 people producing that show. Yes. That show. And we'll have a whole episode yeah. with you, of course. Yes. Just um, gas you up a little bit. Yes. But that's so funny. Yeah. About a year ago, we started interviewing. Mm -hmm. And what I love as a business owner and like, a boss, I guess, of people is that like, I love when you have something that like you don't deal with at all and it like gets done, it gets done right. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't happen a lot. Rain and I touch everything about our business, but this blog specifically was like, <laughs> Tess is in charge and I don't want to know about it until it's ready to go. <laughs> and Tessa like, goes, I have 80 articles ready to go. <laughs> I was like, first of all, great. And second of all, how much money that cost <laughs> us? <laughs> Raina looked at me wide eyed. She goes, we got to stop the blog. We have to stop. <laughs> Tessa's just, you can talk into the mic, Tessa. <laughs> so 
and Ashley helped too. At, and we have someone else who works for us that does a great job. But like you really spearheaded this, and this would be something that I would work on. I'm I'm like more in charge of the content side. I had nothing to do with it, and it's done. And it's incredible, <laughs> and you did so great. So we want to hear you talk about it. Yeah, I'm excited. We have. I mean, it's it correlates very well with the podcast. It's just everything sex, dating, a lot of stuff specifically just for sex toys. It's kind of a wide range of content. So we'll try to like correlate things with what the episodes that come out or if there's anything that you guys want to read about, you can send topics to create at vibesonly.com okay. and we can pitch some of the writers. Some of the ones I think that I'm excited for that we're launching with is like the ABCs of sex toys, how to deal with mismatched libidos and Love why it. is sexing a stranger so sexy? I <laughs> haven't read any of them. I'm not even one. So just I, so you guys know if it's full of a bunch of crazy stuff, that's on Tessa. No, but they, like her and Ashley too, like found incredible writers and you're a great writer as well and a great editor. And so I want to have the experience that a reader new to the site is going to have. I can't wait to read about sex and a stranger. I don't know what's about to happen in that article. It's the least I've ever seen Ashley touch anything in our company. Truly. I mean, I, I, I like that though. I like being able to like have people, great. have people you trust to like take the reins on the, the project. the dream. Truly. Yeah. I mean, there's things that I don't touch at all. You guys run the live shows. I just show up. <laughs> I'm like, are we going to have strippers this show? You're like, no, you knew this. I'm like, I just come to the shows. But no, I put my stamp on it. But really, Tessa and Ashley run it. So Tessa really just did this. And so we'll see what happens on Monday. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited. We have great writers. They had great yeah. ideas. All of these were pitched to me. So it was mm -hmm. a lot of the audience had just great ideas and what they wanted to write about. And so I'm excited. People are really funny. Like the writing is really good. I'm yes. really excited. Ugh. Well, thanks to all those writers right. too. And then, so if you want to write for Vibes Only, also create at vibesonly.com. Am I allowed to start taking more articles? Oh, right. <laughs> you know what? Actually, let's Don't circle back mind. on that. <laughs> 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 when she said 80, I was like, Ashley's just stop this we should stop this now we're just funneling money to tessa we have no idea how much money how much does this cost Marina, it's fine <laughs> tessa's like embezzling from the company <laughs> oh my god she's like i'm 80 i was like bitch how many years is this gonna last us <laughs> anyway guys you can go to the site now and you will see a handful and then new content every week yeah, and we'll let you know when we're looking for new writers. Yeah, we're good for a we'll let you months. know. <laughs> yes. um, well, you're going to email it out in the newsletter also, so it'll be in the vibesonly.com newsletter, uh, and then the Instagram, of course, also you'll post some stuff. Tessa, are you enjoying your job? How was the first year of your life <laughs> here? I love it. I mean, you know, I emailed for nine months in order to get the interview, so I'm very happy don't plan on leaving anytime soon, so I'm very <gasps> excited. Serena, we'll talk. All, you're blowing your load. I just we'll do to, all this. <laughs> we'll tell the whole story another time, but I just want her to like say on record how much she loves me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. you. Approve. We approve. Thank You've you, been Tessa, amazing. It's been a great year with you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so you know we've been having these like mini guests. <laughs> Like we talked about last week with your neighbor. He wants to, he's like, I feel like I provide a lot of value. People really want me back on. And I was like, you could come on someday. So I was watching back the edit that Anna, our wonderful editor was like, she'll put notes on the screen sometimes that like make me laugh. Mm -hmm. Like she'll talk about cuts and edits that she makes. And sometimes she'll make like notes about like funny stuff. And she like has a great sense of humor as well. And how last week we were talking about like, it's a mini guest. It's a little, what we called it something. And she goes, would you call it a microdose guest? Cause microdose was the partner last week. She goes, it's a guest microdose. I, wait, that's so I know. And I was like, that was an amazing, so that was an amazing callback. So thank you to our microdose guest for today. <laughs> <Tessa>. <laughs> You were? Yeah, great. Tessa and Anna are way quicker than us. Damn it. I didn't know. <laughs> Everyone that works for us is incredible. Yes, truly. And so smart and funny. That's the requirement. And everybody who's microdosing as guests has been amazing. I know. I actually, I don't like go to the, go to our YouTube page and read comments that frequently, but I read them this week and it is just an avalanche of, oh my God, your neighbor's so hot. Did you guys think I was just like talking about somebody ugly? Even he goes, have you seen your YouTube comments? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, everybody's just being like, he's so hot. And he was like, they're like surprised. And he's like, have you had like really bad taste and like ugly guys in the past like people don't trust you <laughs> right. and I was like no I have great taste in how guys look I was like you've seen our video guy and I was like I just pick like I have bad taste in guys but like the way they look I'm just I'm firing on all cylinders that energy can always be a little insulting of surprise <laughs> like it's when someone says your boyfriend's hot and they're surprised like <laughs> Ashley he is hot it's like yeah what am I, an ugly dog? I can't get a hot guy. Like when people act too surprised that your man is hot, it's, it's an insult. It's really rude. I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's really hot, right? Not, yeah, I've been saying he's hot. He's the hot neighbor. Why do you think that's his fucking name? Okay, I didn't say he's the tall neighbor or the smart neighbor. I said the hot neighbor. He's also tall and smart. He's wonderful, but that's I didn't like it. It's not, that's not the number one way I chose to identify him. Right, right. Of all the things, I picked you hot. haven't been calling him like tall Yale neighbor. No, <laughs> my main hang. Like I, that's he's hot. So you um, went to his house the other day. I did. Rena. <laughs> well, I don't think he's trying to sleep with me. I think he missed you though. <laughs> like, well, I think he missed you when you went home for the holiday. <laughs> Well, he did. Friday was really funny. I Friday, think you're like his good friend. <laughs> you remember what I said? I thought I was Ryan's best friend. <laughs> I was like, we're really good friends. I might be his best friend. If he had a dog, that would be his best friend. Um, I asked Ryan if I was his best friend. <laughs> he was, did he say yes? <laughs> he danced around it. <laughs> He's scared to say yes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Anyways, my hot neighbor, he texted me on Friday and he was like, he said something about like, when are you coming back? And so I told him. And then Saturday, he was like, what time do you get back? And I told him. And then like, he s- heard me walking around. He was like, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, do you want to come over? And I was like, my initial thought was, is he trying to rob me? What? <laughs> right That's the only he thing that wants to hang out. out. You're a good hang. I was just like. Is he trying to find out when I'm not in the house? Like, he's just asking me <laughs> over and over again. When do you get back? What time do you get back? Welcome back. Do you want to come over? Now that you're back, please leave the house. And then I remembered he... T- <laughs> I was like, is he trying to rob me? He has the key to my house. Yeah. He has the code to the lockbox. Yeah, he can, so he rob, can rob me anytime whenever. he wants. Yeah, I think he actually would hang out with you. You got to get your confidence up. <laughs> That's insane. This hot guy wants to hang out with you. You're like, is he trying to rob me? <laughs> I know. That was literally what I was thinking. Listen, I've been here for the taking for six months. He could have fucked me if he wanted to. I think he wants to rob me. He saw you in action. It's ever since the podcast. Yeah. He came in the studio and he was, you know, that's what people love. Seeing someone do something they're passionate about that turned him on. Yeah. We'll see. All right. Well, anyway. Okay. So for Thanksgiving, I went home to my family. My brother and sister-in-law came in from London. So that was like really fun. But I haven't, it's the first time I've seen you in like 11 or 12 days yeah, today. Yeah, I know. You know how many times I've said I, I miss you and you didn't say it back? What? I left you so many voice notes and I was like, I miss you so much. Okay. You were just like, okay, we can get that done. We can get oh that my God. did not respond to it. I'm so sorry. Okay. So I have been missing me. So I <laughs> <laughs> I did miss you. I feel so bad because sometimes like we have to work a lot. Like I felt really like stressed out. Yeah, like we, it's always like this the third year in a row. Like it's just, this is a busy time for us. We have a fucking retail company, like shocker, like black mm-hmm. Friday, cyber money, like all of it. So, and then I was just like, I would be with my family or I'd be with sparkle eyes. And so you were sending voice notes that like, I would just look at the transcription sometimes. Yeah, me too. I've been doing that with you too. So then sometimes like I didn't hear the, I miss you. So it didn't provoke me to say it back. I, I, do, I am sorry. There's been a bunch of times. Oh, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you decided to go to Boston again this weekend. You're like, what am I going to do? I'm going to come back and do nothing this weekend. And I was like, you could hang out with me. I'm here. Marina, in I the history you. of our friendship, you've never gotten back from a, like, a long trip and been like, let's hang out. I would have, though. We would see no, each other No, so you long. get back and you're like, I have to lay outside and <laughs> read a book. Don't even front. Like, we would have ever hung out if I did come back. <laughs> We don't really hang out that much. <laughs> so anyway, I missed you too. Just want to go on record and say it. Yeah, I went to Boston actually the weekend before and after Thanksgiving. Yeah. The second time was like unplanned. It was like spur of the moment. Like I was going to fly back to LA on a Saturday because I did not want to fly on that Sunday. Also, did you see that stat that it was the most traveled Sunday of all time? In what the U.S. Yesterday was? Yeah, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Wow. Was the most traveled, like, TSA statistically in America and, like, oh my God. ever. Anyway, I don't like traveling on that day. So I was going to come back to L.A. It was Friday night. I was like, why don't I just go to Boston for the weekend? And my parents had something to do on Saturday. It just, like, made sense. And I flew back here on Monday morning. But the first weekend I was there, I did meet his parents. And they are wonderful. Yay. And I really, I knew what to expect. I mean, he's talked about them a lot. And it's interesting because people, like, ask I've gotten some messages of like, you're dating an Indian guy, you know, how does this work with this family? And I know every family is different, but they are not a family that cares, you know, like they are really open and it's they're not a thing. There's no it's not a thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're not like, we've, we've had friends that have not been accepted by their partner's family or it took a really long time. And, yeah. you know, fortunately that's just not what 
I'm experiencing with them. They were really, there's really great and open and accepting. And they're not the type of like parents that put a bunch of pressure on their kids. And they just seem really wonderful. And I, I knew that. And so they were great to me. We went out to brunch. Then we went back to their house and I met their cute dog. And his mom had like a look on, she had a heel on. Brunch. Yes, she looked fly as hell. Okay. Yes, and his dad, he was like, my dad doesn't talk too much. I'm like, could have fooled me. His dad was like chatty cat. Ashley says that about my dad too. Dad just like to talk to Ashley. I do think that, yeah. So I just I like heard a lot about their family and like coming to the United States from India and just their whole story and just really liked them and had like a great time. I have like nothing but good things to say. I feel like that was the final piece though. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he spent a lot of time with your family you yeah. and his sister. So like that was the final piece of like, what's this going to look like? Cause like your relationship with somebody's family will make or break your mm-hmm. relationship. You know, yeah. like I've seen plenty of relationships end because family doesn't like you. You don't like them. Yeah. You're like, this is not going to be my rest of my life being saddled with these people. Yeah. So I feel like it's like the final piece. Now you guys can get married. <laughs> He sent me a text after you guys left brunch. He said, like, nailed it or, like, she crushed or something. Yeah. Like, he gave me the update. Yeah. I mean, we were always love this, like, really funny, cute, fun group chat, the three of us. And he wanted to, like, report to Raina. Like, she did great. Yeah. But I feel like we both really think our moms would get along. Like, there's just something so special about seeing, like, really two important. moms hit it off. Yes. Yeah. And so I just am excited for, like, that day Yay. when it comes. And when I went back the second weekend... It was just really, really chill. I think we watched like five movies. Like you texted me at 9 a.m. You were in bed watching The Family Stone, I, which is, I think it's my favorite Christmas movie. Yeah. So I introduced him to The Family Stone in the holiday. He hadn't seen either. That's crazy. One morning he like made coffee and brought me coffee in bed, which is my love language. Then we just like watched Trevor Wallace's special at 9 a.m. I'm like, this is the lap of luxury. Like I love a morning like viewing of something. I just, I think you haven't really had a lot of like weekends in his city where you just do life. Yeah. And I know? like love his place. It felt like so cozy. He's so clean. He has great style, great taste, cute, cozy fireplace. He cooked me dinner one night. We went and got a Christmas tree. It was just perfect. I just, I kept saying like, this is my favorite weekend of like all the things we've done, like mm-hmm. Cabo, LA, like just, this was so special to me. And like the Christmas vibes in the air and like doing all this like cute Christmas stuff and like watching a million fucking movies and laying on the couch and like having coffee in bed and like him cooking me dinner. It was just really special. I, I loved it. And I'm glad I went to do that. I am too. And we are going to do this episode about long distance relationships because all of mine have been long distance yeah. and yours is too. And I think that that is like a really important thing when you're in a long distance relationship that like not all your interactions are these great trips that it is just like a let's stay in for the weekend and see do we like like each other day to day it's like really important yeah I love hanging out with them it's great like we watched the Eagles game on Sunday like I just kept being like this is my perfect weekend we didn't do anything so uh, it's funny because he sent you a Thanksgiving like gift basket like a really cute like cheese and meats (laughs) what so he sent me this basket I don't, I don't know what you're gonna say. <laughs> he sent me this like cheese, meat, wine basket, and I wanted to like send him a video saying thank you. And <laughs> what I was gonna say, you could say. And it. Ryan was over. Ryan was living in his van outside my house for weeks, and I try to look as slutty as possible when I'm around Ryan. So he was in his van for a couple hours, and I was reading a book outside in a bikini top and shorts. And like Ryan walked back in, I was like, "Oh, we gotta send them a video saying thank you." And like I'm wearing a very low cut, like it just covered my nipples, and I didn't really think about it. Because I'm just like, I'm just flirting with Ryan. This I'm just trying to like make Ryan feel turned on. So I, I grabbed the Thanksgiving box and I'm like, I sent this video, me and Ryan talking, me saying thank you. And I hit send and then I like see it in the group chat. And it's just all so titty. The four of like, us, it's insane. Like I saw it come through. I was like, what and is Raina doing? It's all it's the, all tits. The four of us are on this group chat. It's me and Ryan and Sparkle Eyes and Ashley. And I see it go through. I see the lead photo and I'm like, it's all tits. It is so much tits. And then you weren't really responding and I start to spiral out of control. And I was like, is she mad at me? Is it too much tits for the group chat? And then I was like, the sun was in my eyes and Ryan was here and I was trying to be sexy for Ryan. Well, it was just so funny. No, of course I don't care, but like every time- I went in to respond. I had to see your tits fill the screen. Like, it's just like, I finally was like, I'm about to just type a bunch. So they go up. Ashley goes, sparkle eyes. Can't look at this anymore. <laughs> Let's put on YouTube. Let's do a screenshot of like, cause you know, you see the like preview. It's just a oh, preview is just my chest. If you would see it, you would be like, that girl is sending a sext to her best friend's boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> But yes, he sent cute Thanksgiving baskets to my brother and stuff and my parents. Yeah. 
so <gasps> yeah, we had a little charcuterie on Thanksgiving Day for like a lunch. Yeah, he's just like super thoughtful. Like I felt that, like so. I should have sent him something. You can't keep up with him. I he's really too can't. thoughtful. But I'll send a big thing for his parents for Christmas. You know, like I was like, I got you guys on Christmas. I've been busy selling vibrators. I can't be, you know, like just throw some money at the problem. Just, just send them like a big thing, you know? That'd be great. I'm just like, I bought your parents' this car. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> They would be like, uh, oh, I didn't know that you rolled like that. That is so crazy. I'm out in this car. It's a whole thing. Yeah, like the Christmas car you commercial. Just buy it on Carvana. Like you get delivered. Yeah, I'm like, I didn't know what to get him. So I just sent this car over. Christmas by Carvana. <laughs> it's like the year that I forgot to get you a Christmas gift, and I was about to go to your parents' house like the next day, and I knew that you had like got me something really thoughtful because you always do it. So I went to YSL and bought you a bag, and the woman in the store was like, "You buy yourself a gift?" And I was like, "No, it's for my female business partner." And she was like, oh, "It was like a really good year." <laughs> I love that fact. That was an amazing gift. <laughs> it really was. It is so funny when you're on two different pages with somebody and like, I'm over here like, oh my God, like she went so above and beyond. She spent so much more on me and you're over here like, damn, I didn't do enough. She did something so you thoughtful. Me, like a beautiful painting that you like, like, the, the but, like, I, but I didn't pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> did I ever tell you? He wouldn't, no. didn't charge me. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now across the room, my free painting. No. He's wonderful. He just refused. YSL did not refuse. <laughs> YSL was like, you're going to pay us. You're going to pay us a lot of money. for this. That was not my experience at the store. Uh, <laughs> I, I was, was like, about to Venmo me for that bag. <laughs> you didn't pay for that painting? Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. All right. Is that it? That's it. That's that's enough. I did not think that that story was going to come up about the boobs. That's I, funny. I didn't know that's where you were going. Same wavelength. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you guys about Buffy, and this is also really relevant because I slept on Buffy bedding this whole time at Sparkle Ice Place. I've made sure that he has all of our partners on his bed, so he has the Buffy cloud comforter and the sheets, the pillowcases, <sighs> amazing sleep experience at his place. Unreal, Love it. Right? Yes, and just then- so soft. And he's didn't have Buffy before, so he's like, this is such a game changer. Buffy makes award-winning bedding that's soft on you and soft on the earth. They use innovative design and earth-friendly materials to make bedding that's softer, safer, and also better for our planet, which we love that. They have been like one of our longest running partners. We have everything Buffy does. I had the sheets at my parents and the comforters, of course. They really do keep you cool. They're filled with eucalyptus fibers instead of polyester or down, which don't retain heat. This is huge. I feel like I'm sleeping on angel wings. Like I know. And it's my biggest thing is like a puffy fluffy comforter, but when you get that down and polyester, it makes you so hot. I know. Nothing heats you up more than polyester <laughs> and down on top of it. Seriously. And like polyester sheets, like don't get me started. So all the Buffy bedding is ideal for hot sleepers, summer climates, or of course they keep you nice and cozy and warm in the winter as well. They're like magic. And again, dyed using natural skin safe botanical dyes. And they really just have something for everyone. Like I've done Buffy as so many different gifts for people like sheets. Like it's a great gift. It's the best birthday gift. It's the best holiday gift. There's nobody that won't like it. I know the pillows, everything you can get on there and just see everything that they offer. Again, we like Love all the bedding, all the comforters, the breeze sheet set we both have, and the duvet covers. I mean, even if someone like has the comforter and the sheets, like just get them a new duvet cover. You know, there really is something for everyone. I got my dad this like pillow one year. He was obsessed with it. So really treat yourself or someone else. Buffy offers a free seven night at home trial. So you can experience before buying. That's how much they know that you're gonna love it. Shipping is free. We love customers also enjoy 100 night free returns policy. So for $20 off your Buffy order, visit Buffy.co and enter GGE. That's Buffy.co, promo code GGE for $20 off. Yes, and say hello to a stressless holiday season with the help of HelloFresh. Skip the grocery store and save time with easy, tasty recipes delivered to your door. Go to HelloFresh.com slash GGE free and use the code GGE free for free breakfast for life, one breakfast item per box while subscription is live. So it is the season for gathering. I know we're all spending a lot of money on gifts and and time. And this is a great way to number one, save. So getting fresh recipes delivered is always gonna be cheaper than takeout and it's pre-portioned ingredients. You don't have to waste money on excess food. And we're all doing so much work, just like shopping and prepping and 
I think it's just nice to like slow down, eat a wholesome meal. And they have so many options, but one of them is a 15 minute meal option. So they'll actually break it out into all kinds of things on the website, stuff that's good for kids or vegetarians. But this 15 minute meal is really quick and easy. They have stuff for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. They have over 45 recipes and more than a hundred seasonal add on items to choose from every single week. They just make shopping so, so simple. And you're going to be out shopping, sipping cocoa, not thinking about what's for dinner. Ashley gets so much stuff. Last night, I made the Tex-Mex turkey bowls. They are a favorite. They are super easy. I'm obsessed with them. I made them a bunch of times. Pineapple salsa, green pepper, and cilantro rice. Tonight, I'm going to do that one pan trattoria tortellini bake. And then I got fresh mozzarella and tomato caprese grain bowls, which is like a 10-minute lunch or dinner. And that's what I'm doing this week. And that trattoria tortellini bake lasts, like, that's like three meals for me. It is. The good portion sizes. Yeah. They have sesame mushroom lo mein, creamy mushroom ferrotto. Also, if you don't know how to cook and you're just like, I would like this season to learn how to cook a little bit better, this will teach you. I feel like people are like, I'm not creative. I don't know how to make anything. This will help you be creative. 100%. They're app is so easy to use and delivery. It's just so, so simple. Go to hellofresh.com slash GGE free and use the code GGE free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com slash GGE free with code GGE. Okay, let's talk about orgasm. Yeah. All right, guys, we are so excited to welcome back a fabulous guest to the show. She is a licensed psychotherapist with over 20 years of experience in the sex therapy field. She has been featured on Girls Gotta Eat and <laughs> hundreds of articles <laughs> in places like Harvard's Bazaar, Allure, Oprah Magazine, and the New York Times. Her weekly podcast, Pillow Talk, covers all things sex and intimacy, as well as her website that boasts tons of tips and guides. I was just perusing it before this interview. It is so, so, so good. So is her Instagram with half a million followers and you can pick up her book sex talks the five conversations that will transform your love life please welcome back to the show vanessa moran Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be back. Yay, we're so, so excited glad to have you. Back. It was exactly two years ago. Uh, <laughs> it was the. Oh, yeah, it was November. November 21st, 2021. Yeah. It was the last I came time out we to here. New York. Yes. Mm -hmm. We were in a totally different setup. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I'm so excited to be back. That episode was so great. I just loved it so much. And I just feel like the main thing that sticks out was like the, the spanking. spanking. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, yes. It was funny because we had, like, I think we were doing our show in Boston. And we brought this guy up on stage and we were like going to have him like spank oh, Raina. No. And he was this like huge hot guy. He had these long arms, whatever. And he was so bad at spanking. And I was like, you didn't find your target. And ever since <laughs> we've like had to kind of coach people on spanking, like when we do like jokingly things at shows and stuff. That's and I'm funny. like, you got to find your target. And I think about yeah. you all the time. Honestly, well, that guy's and arms so were honored. so big. He couldn't even find me. I know. He, he like knocked he you hit over. me on the side of my body. And I just, but oh. and half hearted too. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I think about you we talked about that like yes you're gonna hit like a bone if you don't know where you gotta grab the right part of it yeah so I'm anyways. so glad that's what I'm known for now like the half-hearted spanking just maybe that'll be personally. my next guide that I create guide to spanking like, guide just correctly spanking yeah with your whole heart <laughs> Yeah, like a spank with your chest. Spank. spank with your chest. Yeah, do it from the gut. So we <laughs> talked about your book the last time and the conversations that will transform your love life. So check that episode out, you guys. It's really fantastic. <laughs> We're talking about orgasms with you today. But we reference you, I feel like, all the time. And you introduced us to the pelvic pain specialist as well, Sonia Bellani. And yes, we did a great episode yeah. with her as well because you introduced us. So thanks. yes. So, okay, two years ago, anything. And we've like kept up with you on social media and whatnot. We actually just met your husband. He popped in and then he's he off did. to Erewhon. <laughs> but anything new? new updates in your life you want to talk about or it's just same as well the the book became an instant new york times bestseller which was oh the Yay! most exciting thing for us that was like a lifelong dream for me yeah you think? A, a lot of hard work <laughs> it's a good dream it. so that was really amazing very very excited about that and then on a more personal note because i know this is something that we connect over we just finally kind of finalized the decision that we're going to be child free so xander got a vasectomy about two months ago <laughs> So body. that's a yeah, that's our like big person. Why do I feel like <laughs> weirdly emotional? Because I thought you were gonna say we decided to have kids. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> and it went the other direction and then the vasectomy. Oh my god. <laughs> we should have kept him around to talk about it. <laughs> he would love to. Uh, you could do a whole vasectomy episode because it was really interesting. Oh, we would like, love to very it was such an easy experience. And we've had so say many more. of our so many of our <laughs> friends like asking him, okay, but did it really hurt? And how bad was it? My wife wants me to do it, but I don't want to do it. And so many misconceptions yeah. like 
somebody asked him if they take his balls off. And I was like, oh my God. Like it's a dog? <laughs> yeah. How badly do we misunderstand <laughs> like this? It's like it's them. a neutering. Yes. It's yeah. like a 20 minute procedure. So, yeah. I'm yeah. so glad that we're talking about this because my ex called me and told me he got one as well. <laughs> and yeah. he said, I'm driving home. I just got a vasectomy. And I was like, what the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> You're driving home. And he was like, yeah, it was, no, it was 15 minutes. It, it was, was local so anesthesia. Easy. And I drove home. Yeah, he said the worst part was the anesthesia. He's like, you know, you're just seeing a needle and it's going in your genital region. It's a uh-huh. little scary. But after that, he didn't feel a thing. And it was, yeah, super easy. But just a really interesting experience to go through of, you know, we've thought that we aren't going to have kids for about the last 10 years or so and have always said, like, you know, we can keep talking about it. Mm-hmm. Like, we can change our minds at any point. But to make that final decision, and I know vasectomies are reversible, so we still could change our minds. But to, like, make that decision to get that procedure just feels like a big milestone. And wow. I'm really excited about it. Um, thanks for sharing. Oh, nice. <laughs> Ugh, I, love I know you guys would appreciate you. it. Uh, we definitely I do. I feel like someone just told me they were pregnant, but the opposite <laughs> I'm so I never get to be excited for people not I know. having kids because like one of our friends told us she was pregnant recently and I was crying I was so excited for them but like I'm so excited for you to not have kids <laughs> <laughs> so we we were talking about doing an episode about faking orgasms and we were like what about Vanessa and then I DM'd you and I was like do you have any thoughts about this? And you were like I have research I have all this I information so I'm ready <laughs> call me up coach so yeah, um, put, me in. put me in coach so that's what we're going to talk about today is how common is this in men versus women women um (laughs) men are like what is faking orgasm i orgasm every time and just potential reasons for faking it Mm -hmm. and how we can stop doing this and i wrote on that outline consequences of faking (laughs) orgasm (laughs) so serious but i I feel like so many women have just grown up thinking that like sex is about a man's pleasure and them finishing and it's not really about your like masturbating was about my pleasure and sex was about a man's pleasure Mm -hmm. for so many years and i think that narrative has changed but so many people are so deep into faking orgasms for so many years that it's like, how do I get out of this? I yeah. I, and I was one how of those I get out people. The game? It really is. I mean, you feel like you get very stuck doing it. And especially if you've been with a partner that you've been doing it for a while, it's you know very easy to feel like I, I've worked myself into this corner and mm-hmm. I don't know how to back out of it at this point. Yes. And they think they're doing what I want. So mm-hmm. how do I go back from that? Mm-hmm. Like It's a tough cycle to break out of. I mean, we've had people in our community when we've talked about this, people have said, I've been faking for 10, 15, 20 years. <sighs> yeah. And like, what do I do? I'm married to this person now. Totally. And he thinks like, this is how my body works. And this mm-hmm. is what I like. And how am I supposed to rewind 20 years yes. of that experience and say like, I changed my mind. Psych. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. I also want to say up top, just so that we reference your husband, Xander, you are in business with him and mm-hmm. he is like the co-author of the website and Instagram and everything. What do you, yeah. business partner? So our whole shtick is that I'm the sex therapist and he's my regular dude okay. husband. I just wanted to like clarify for everybody. Yeah. He started working with me back in 2016 and originally was doing all the back end, like operational stuff of the business. And I, I kept having this feeling that it would be so valuable for us to be able to talk about sex and relationships as a real couple. Mm -hmm. And he was very self-conscious of it at the time. Like, I don't have all the training that you do. I didn't go to grad school. I'm not licensed. And I was like, yeah, but I think that's the point. Like, Mm -hmm. I can give all the expert advice, but I think people really want to hear from somebody who's, you know, just in the relationship too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think having, you know, having a male and a female, even though we try to appeal to, you know, really be inclusive in our content, I think like being able to have both sides of a relationship helps normalize it, makes people feel more comfortable makes men feel more comfortable yeah so it's been really beneficial to have him be a part of the journey okay great great okay well where should we start how common it is to fake an orgasm yeah let's get some stats yeah okay so we have pulled our audience about this a bunch of times i'll give you one that we did most recently we had about forty thousand people respond so this is a lot of people awesome we asked women have you ever faked an orgasm just ever okay 74 percent said yes so we we did a couple of the same polls we got 82 percent Ooh, interesting when i saw that 74 percent, i was like liars (laughs) i know (laughs) yeah i thought i'm surprised it wasn't a hundred percent yeah and interestingly if you think about it too like both both sets of our audiences are pretty sex positive people. Like they've at least, you know, mm-hmm. they're like, I want to follow this account and learn more. So I think that number, you know, in the general population is is even higher than that. Yeah. Okay. okay. And 
I don't know if you have a style like this. I probably should look this up ahead of time. But like men get to completion during a sexual act X amount of percent of times and versus women. Like, what, 91%? It's like 91. Well, and women are like, what, 38%? Well, we, we just posted mm-hmm. this on our Vibes Only Instagram with some stats. We did this funny kind of TikTok reel thing that I acted out or whatever. And then, But the caption was a lot of stats. And it was funny because I think it did say like 91% of the time men orgasm. And our friend Bobby commented under it. And he goes, seems a little low, to be honest. <laughs> like, that doesn't seem like, low. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just a funny comment from a guy being like, oh, it's not 99.99999. <laughs> we did that same poll and we got 93% of men said that they always or almost always orgasm. Yeah. And only 29% of women said that they always, always or orgasm. orgasm. Yeah. That's yeah. An astonishing that's gap. That's a huge, huge gap. And there's other studies as well that have shown the gap to be more like around 30%. And to me, that felt really high. Like I think they were referencing about 91% of men and around 61, 62% of women. I think it's really normal. And Ashley and I have all the tools and I have all the tools to say to somebody, (laughs) we have an ocean of sex toys, (laughs) but I have all the verbiage to say to somebody, I don't like this or please do it this way. And I still fake it. Like the last person that I was like sleeping with, I faked it most of the time. I didn't seem as a long-term partner. So I was like, this is not a project I'm going (laughs) to tackle. But even I was like, I'm just, I'm not going to get there, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that it's normal and Ashley and I have every tool on on the planet. So even us, you know, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a sex therapist and I knew I wanted to be a sex therapist from about age 12. And I started faking orgasms like immediately once I became sexually active and nobody ever told me directly, like you should fake it or like, this is what's expected of you. But it was just so ingrained in me that like, we're supposed to have orgasms. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be from penetration alone that like even at a young age of starting to like fool around with my boyfriend, like I just knew that that's what I was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And that was a huge source of insecurity for me too, especially as I got older and really was getting serious in this career and starting to do research and internships. Like this huge imposter syndrome came up for me. of like, how uh-huh. am I wanting to pursue this as a career? And yet I'm still faking it in my personal totally. life. Totally. I mean, you guys, watch, I watched porn starting from the edge of 12. Wow, those women were at the time of their lives. And I was like, this is not my experience. <laughs> yeah. But it should be. Yeah. You know, for me, I learned how to have an orgasm on my own at a pretty young age. So it wasn't an issue for I me. Just of, like, I've you. never had okay. one. Like, you know, I just feel like I have to fake it. Like, I knew what my body needed to get there. It was pretty simple. <laughs> it wasn't actually that difficult. Right. It didn't take that much time. But I felt so insecure, like asking for what I wanted. And I think in particular, what really got me was the emphasis on intercourse, on feeling like I'm supposed to orgasm just from penetration Mm -hmm. alone. That's not how my body works. That's not how the vast majority Mm -hmm. of women's bodies work. But it was so ingrained in me that it was supposed to be that way that that blocked me from, hey, I I know a very easy and simple way to actually get myself off. (laughs) Isn't it crazy that like it's the exact opposite of what you're taught? when? you actually come from just penetration. You're like, guess what happened last night? <laughs> guess what? Remember when I was like, oh my God, Raina, I came from missionary. Like when that, you come like, from missionary, <laughs> it's like, who, where are the trophies? Where is the parade? Are they going to name a day after me? Am I going to get a month? This is it's the exact opposite. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's when you actually realize it. Oh, your, your life begins really yeah. <laughs> you know? because it's the opposite of what we thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're like, no, that's actually the most rare way to fucking do it. Totally. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would have orgasms. I was a hundred percent success rate on my own, but I was just rubbing my own clit. And I always say on the show, that I thought it was like a trick that I invented and that no one oh, knew about I. it. Cause again, <laughs> I'd watch porn and these women were just bouncing up and down on this dick, having the time of their lives. And I was like, that doesn't feel good to me. Uh-huh. And you're right. You could just explain to somebody very simply, just go in a circle and rub his little bean. Yeah. And I couldn't tell anybody that for so long. Okay, well, we are just going to take a really quick break and then get back into it with Vanessa. We're going to talk about Hinge. Yes, so Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. Why? Hinge gives you a sense of someone's personality and lets you share your own. You get to know potential dates through your unique answers to prompts, plus get a sense of someone's dating intentions and what they're looking for. So I recently went on a Hinge date and mm. I really like credit Hinge specifically with like facilitating this because I love their prompts. There's so many ways to like, mm. show your personality and be creative. So one of my prompts, it's a little dated at this point, but it says like, I know the best place for whatever. And I said, not much because I just moved to LA, which is kind of a lie at this point, but whatever. So this guy responded to that and he was like, I would love to be your tour guide. Mm -hmm. And I was like, 
great. What qualifies you for that? And he sent like a really cute response. And it's just like, you're off to the races right away. Yeah. And you can really just like learn about somebody's personality. Are they funny? And I was just like immediately on a date with him a couple days later. Like yeah. it just made it so quick and easy. And I like learned about somebody really quick and what their green flags are and, and what they're looking for. Yes. It's right uh, there. Do they want a relationship? Are they just trying to have fun? You know? Yes. Pictures were cute. And I just was from like app to messages to text message to date within like three days. Yeah. So they make it really easy. And yes, like you said, to figure out what somebody's looking for. And we had a guest on the show two weeks ago, Alyssa, who met her boyfriend on Hinge. And she was just feeling herself. They just facilitate a really easy way to find somebody and open conversation. Yes, that is just our favorite current Hinge success story. And hopefully, you know, that is long lasting, uh-huh. lasts forever. And they both deleted the app. So they really have done what Hinge sets out to do. And again, you guys can listen back to Alyssa's episode two weeks ago. And then we cut a really great clip that is on our Instagram as well of kind of like what she feels like made the difference and mm-hmm. like changing her photos to reflect her energy at the time and then just actually trying. I just, I love that clip. She really jams a lot into like a, you know, one and a half minute of like, here's what I feel like the secret is. It's not tricking the algorithm. It's not doing this. It's not doing that. It's just like having good energy and actually trying and putting yourself out there like you did. Yeah. You know, like you didn't have to, if that guy wrote back with what he felt like would make him a good LA tour guide, you could have been like, oh, I don't like this one thing he said. That's kind of corny, this and that. And But instead you were like, okay, let's go out. Like you actually just Prove got it. to the date. Prove yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so mm-hmm. Ashley and I both really highly recommend it. On Hinge, there are new rules, times, or games. If you're feeling inspired, give Hinge a try. Download Hinge today and find someone worth deleting the app for. Okay. No. So, I mean, we want to talk about, you know, broadly and speak to our audience, but I'm still curious about your story. Like, did something change? Was it a partner? Like, would you say was you just start asking for what you wanted? Yeah, it, there was one very specific experience that really got me. So the imposter syndrome was really building and building mm-hmm. over time. And I was getting to this point where, you know, the shame was just getting so great and I was getting so frustrated and just didn't know what to do. And I also, at that point, like it actually, despite pursuing a career in this field, it took me years to to learn that women need clitoral stimulation to reach orgasm. And despite the fact that that's what I was doing on my own, you know, it still took me so long to learn, oh, this is not how our bodies work. We're not wired to have orgasms just from penetration alone. We can talk about that more too, because that's so important. But it took me a very long time to learn this. And so the experience that I finally had, it was in college. I was hooking up with a guy. I was really into him and it was like finally happening. I was so excited. He was kind of your classic like bad boy type. I was so excited about it. And so he was fingering me and so it it actually could have worked, but he was not doing the way that I wanted it to. Mm It wasn't working for me. And so I faked an orgasm and he said, I can play you like a fiddle. Like he was so proud of himself (laughs) for making me orgasm and just like this look on his face and they're like, I can play you like a fiddle. It grossed me out so much. And I was like, never again. I am never again doing this. Like this man is so proud of himself for (laughs) giving me a fake experience. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not doing this anymore. And that was the last time that I ever faked an orgasm. What an incredible catalyst. I mean, it was gross. It's like, I can't do this anymore. I can't let people think. I mean, I really realized in that moment, like I'm letting him think that he's done such a good job. You're letting him go off into the world and tell people, I am a killer at this. Yeah. yeah. New ick unlocked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you fake an orgasm and he thinks he did a good job. No, but wow. Okay, great. Yeah. So I decided at that point I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. And yeah, but there was a little while where I just didn't fake it. I wasn't having orgasms, but I just wasn't faking it. And that was actually when we polled our audience, that was way more common than I realized. Actually, 22% of women said, I don't fake orgasms, but I don't have them regularly. Mm-hmm. Which so is- that would be more my experience, I would say, was I wasn't faking them. <laughs> Because I was enjoying the experience. Yeah. I mm-hmm. just wasn't, I didn't express to somebody that I had an orgasm. It yeah. just sort of ended, the man came, and that was the end of the experience. That's yeah. probably more my experience. Yeah. So for me at that point, you know, so then it was like a little while of doing that. And then that kind of helped me work up the courage to finally just start asking for what I wanted and needed. And I realized like, oh, this actually isn't that hard to mm-hmm. just ask. And my partners were happy to totally. do it when I just asked. So it was actually frustrating for me how easy it was to start having real orgasms with a partner because I was like why did I fake this for so many years mm-hmm. yes but you don't know until you know you know like I wish I would have got laser hair removal on my vagina years ago but here we are and you just can't you can't dwell on the you can't past. blame on yourself you can't blame yourself <laughs> can't blame yourself <laughs> 
so we just want to talk about some of the reasons. The most prevalent reason is probably the one that resonates with everybody. Just like, I don't know how to ask for it. Okay. So know? that's interesting. Cause I thought that that was going to be the most common response oh, okay. that we got. We did a poll about this and this was one of the most responded to polls that we ever have done on uh-huh. our Instagram account. So actually the most common reason that we got for why women fake is I just want sex to be over. Right. I wanted to end was one of our most common oh, okay. responses as right, well. Right, right, right. Just yeah. wanted to be over. I just wanted to be That's, over. Okay. Yeah. I, I take it back. That feels like I, maybe I did that a lot more with people when they weren't like my partner. You yeah. Know? Like I just, I had a lot of sex when I was like, especially in my twenties, like one night stands or someone that was like casually with, mm-hmm. like, I don't find myself in situations where I want it to be over with my partner who I'm like very much in love with. If we started having sex, it meant we both wanted to. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. But yes, absolutely. I totally th- did that so much. I'm the last person. Just like, I'm ready to end this. Yeah. This I'm, is, done with this. I'm done with yeah, this. And I think there can be yeah. shades of that too. Like, unfortunately for a lot of people, it is like, I didn't really ever like want to even start this to begin with or like this hasn't been fun the entire time and it can go all the way up to like this was great I had fun but like now I'm I'm done and I'm ready for sex to be over and we just don't know like we're so ingrained that the orgasm means the end of sex that we don't know how to end sex otherwise Uh so Uh you often get yourself into this position where you're like okay I'm done but like I don't Okay, let me just pretend that's so then. true. Yeah. We well, don't the, know how to end sex other than it being an orgasm. You tell them, I just want you to come, and then they come. Yeah, and I just start saying over. crazy stuff. Yeah, to get them to come. And that's how you also end it. I'm like, hop behind me, I'm gonna say some crazy things, and you're gonna finish. <laughs> I just I think that like people are in long term relationships, they don't want to let their partner down. Like if you're married, you have kids, you have this huge to-do list, and you're like, I don't want to say no, but like I'd like to stand as quickly as possible. So yeah. I'm just gonna say some crazy stuff and fake yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So then our second most common response was, I feel like my orgasm is too complicated or it takes too much time, too much effort, like the general too much kind of vibe uh-huh. is the second. And then the third one was to please my partner or to make my partner feel better. So really all about hyping up your partner, their ego, making them feel good about it. And then we kind of rounded out the top five with just, I don't orgasm from intercourse period. And then I've never had an orgasm or I can't orgasm with another person. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can what we did talk you about guys some get? Them? So other stuff we got, I know I won't be able to finish. I feel like I'm taking too long. So that's like your second one. I know that my orgasm is more complicated. Yes. So I'd rather just move on which from is it. Which true. like, mm-hmm. how sad is that that somebody's like, let's prioritize your pleasure. And I want my partner to feel good. Those were our top yeah. three. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But men can have fragile egos. So you don't want to bruise somebody else's ego. I was running late for soul cycle. I was sore. My, I wanted my husband uh-huh, to come yeah, and I was, was sore, yeah. really sore, which I mean, we always say use lube. I don't want to add more pressure to a sexual experience. Like so much of this to me is just prioritizing somebody else's comfortability mm-hmm. and totally negating your own. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But then I think, you know, we talked about this, Rand and I have discussed this before. It's not the most negative thing in the world all the time. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I think I don't want to overcorrect with like, never fake an orgasm, ladies. Like, yeah, I do think you should always prioritize your pleasure. But I think there's this like occasional time where you're like, I just knew it wasn't going to happen. He was doing such a great job. And I really was so close. But the moment passed me by and I just felt like having a performance like I don't know like I don't again I just I don't want to if that happens from time to time and they have a great healthy sex life Mm -hmm. to feel like they're being shamed that's what I'm saying you know what I mean one of my favorite sex positions is in the morning when you wake up somebody's behind you and they like slide in I like having sex like that it's lazy it's fun it's like dirty I'm never going to come in that position, Mm -hmm. but I like it. So like I enjoy the experience. (laughs) I just, I know I'm not going to, but I'll masturbate to it later. It's like type two fun for me. (laughs) (laughs) So I totally agree with you. I don't want to shame anyone. Like I did this for so many years. I get all of the complicated reasons and all the different scenarios that can come up. And I don't take a black and white view about it either. Like, you know, the world isn't going to come crashing down if you fake it every once in a while. It's okay. But I do think there is something to be said about us learning how to say, Yes. I'm done. Yes, yes. I'm yes, satisfied. Yes. I'm happy. I've had a good time and I'm ready for us to wrap things up now. I mean, you know, it's like the worst though. If you feel like you have been like moaning genuinely, like mm-hmm. you've been like almost there. You're like, he's killing it. I'm like doing all the things. I'm doing all the dirty talk. And then you're going to be like, God damn it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is over. Like, it's like <laughs> almost like, I don't know. So, well, this is one of the interesting things about orgasm. Like, I love orgasms, I think they're incredible. I love having them. But also at the same time, like, an orgasm lasts for two to 20 seconds. 
Whereas you can experience pleasure and connection yeah. and enjoyment like the entire time yes. or hours. So when we get yeah. hyper fixated yeah. on the orgasm, like in those moments where you're like, oh, fuck, everything was going so well, but I like just can't get over the finish line. We're so fixated on orgasms that it makes us feel like right. the rest of it was bad or a failure in some yeah. way. And that's why we have to fake it to like, you know, make up for it. But I think if we actually take some of the pressure off of orgasm and realize like we can have that pleasure and satisfaction and connection all throughout. And I think that's the best thing to communicate to your partner mm -hmm. in those moments. Like I'm feeling so good. Like I want you to come now. I think yes. that's a really simple way to bring things to a close, but without having to fake an orgasm. That is a great way. And that we, we also like to give people like the language too. Mm -hmm. but that can be a great thing to say. Yeah. I think we did talk about this on the podcast and it, it was spurred by a clip that I think we were just talking about Shan. You did her podcast and it was her and a male guest of like, even if both people didn't orgasm, one person didn't orgasm, it doesn't mean it's bad sex. Yeah. <laughs> that has to be like the reframing. Absolutely. That if there was no orgasms, like it wasn't worth worthwhile. Exactly. Or it wasn't good. Yeah. I think pleasure needs to be the indicator of yeah. the experience. Yeah. Like, did we We're feel fun. good or fun? Just yeah. <laughs> did we have fun? Did we enjoy it? Yeah. Not like, did we have those few seconds of glory at the very end of the experience? And also it's, I think it's worth noting too, like more and more men are having issues with orgasming these days too. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming a bigger issue than, you know, than just us women. So Again, let's enjoy the orgasm. Let's work towards them. Let's, you know, give ourselves the time and the space to like have them. But also it's not the entirety of the experience. Totally. And I think for people that really, really struggle to orgasm from penetrative sex, it's important to give that language of like, I still enjoyed the experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a girlfriend in particular and she really has trouble orgasming. She almost can never do it from penetrative sex and she brings toys into the bedroom. But she said to me, I was so surprised she said it's been a problem in every single relationship of mine and I've never been able to articulate that like I enjoyed it. I just don't really come from sex. And I think it's a problem because your partner thinks like you're not enjoying it. They're not doing the right thing. But like some people really just can't get there. And I'm like proud of her that she was like, well, let's use toys and that will get me there. This is not a shot at you that you can't yeah. get me there. Mm -hmm. It's just, this is not the feeling that gets me there. Yeah. So what's really important for women to realize is that our bodies are just not designed to feel a ton of pleasure from intercourse. So for our bodies, the clitoris is the center of the universe when it comes to pleasure. And if you just think about it logistically, like when you're having intercourse, of course it depends on the position, but in general, you're not getting very much clitoral stimulation. You're getting all the stimulation in your vagina, which actually doesn't have very many nerve endings in it. I mean, like think about how painful people say childbirth is, you know, if we had even more nerve endings mm. in our vaginas, like it would be brutal, right? Right. Oh, so right. Actually, That's why they put them on the outside. <laughs> I've gone kids, looking for like Here we are again. <laughs> <laughs> they. That's why they, like it's a car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <That's> okay. <but> <laughs> That's why they built it that way? That's why they're on the outside? Okay, it all makes sense. So there's what? There's like millions of nerve endings yeah, in your clit? Like, there's right? eight to 9,000 nerve endings in the clitoris. Thousands. Compare that to two to 3,000 in the penis. But I've actually gone looking for a proper scientific tally of how many nerve endings are in the vagina, and I can't find one. Okay, there's there like, are none. There are not that <laughs> many, Jokes right? on you. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the ladies who want kids, though. <laughs> So okay. We're getting stimulation of a part of our body that just is not wired to feel a ton of pleasure. When I realized I could get on top and hit my own clit, yeah. I was like, this is a whole uh, new yeah. level I've yeah. unlocked. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Life begins. I always like to make this funny comparison that like from a nerve ending standpoint, intercourse for a woman is like playing with a man's balls. Like it might feel good. Mm. It might be fun. But for the vast majority of men, it's not going to be anywhere near the level of stimulation needed to reach an orgasm. So like we could imagine some alternate universe where intercourse is actually a man rubbing his balls on a woman's clit. Like we're getting the stimulation that we need on the most sensitive part of our body. He's getting some stimulation on a part of his body that might feel okay. Like would we make men feel bad for like, oh, why, why aren't you orgasming that? That is that? a tough metaphor to swallow. <laughs> Especially as like a man who really cares about your pleasure, hearing that is like, what the fuck? I feel like I'm the emoji that. with the head exploding right now. Yeah. That is crazy. I mean, Rain and I have had various experiences, but I would say like more often than not, I'm with the partner who doesn't care that much about his balls. They're like, fine, yeah, it's okay. They're fine, yeah, they're fine. fine. Sure. So yeah, I feel like telling a man like 
when you fuck me, it's the same as me playing with your balls. They're like, what? <laughs> I can see the tears. <laughs> and this They're is what, upset. <laughs> this is what like drives me nuts too about the way that you see female orgasm talked about like in women's magazines and articles online too. There's always stuff about like, you know, oh, how to have the vaginal orgasm and the cervical orgasm and stuff like that. And we don't talk about this with men. Like there's no Maxim articles or like, here's how to have your ball orgasm tonight or you're like, right. you know, your taint like, orgasm. Right. <laughs> like we don't make different kinds kinds of orgasms it just we assume like okay you're a man penis that's the place where I gotta stimulate got it it's like so simple and straightforward Mm -hmm. but we don't give women that same courtesy and then we make women feel bad on top of that for like oh honey your orgasm is so complicated and it takes so much time and it's just it's just so much harder it's not it's like it's not tiny little button just press (laughs) it you're just not touching the right part I know I mean I feel like we talked about how so much is like mental too Mm -hmm. you know and just I personally I feel like that plays a large part that's why like the dirty talk and all that stuff like yeah. I feel like I could come just from dirty talk alone or just like being so in love with your partner or like the way that they're throwing you around or they're fucking you or whatever it is but I think that's like a large part of it too don't you think like of why you would get there yeah I mean the mental aspect of it is really big for so many women and I do think that's because we just don't understand the truth about how our bodies work and we Mm -hmm. do feel like you know it's so much more complicated it's so much more difficult so I think a lot of women like undoubtedly some of those things can really be helpful it can Mm -hmm. be fun to dirty talk and have different kinds of stimulation and turn our brains off and be able to be like really present in the moment and I think the majority of it is just like not understanding what we need physically Mm -hmm. too yeah and I think that for me it was well I understood it when I was alone, but not necessarily maybe having the confidence to give it to myself. So I think that women are so much in their heads about like, what does my body look like? Is this person enjoying something? So maybe I was a little more hesitant to like hop on top Uh and let somebody just have the whole view of everything when I was younger. I certainly wouldn't have been like touching my own clit during sex because I was like, that's what porn stars do. That's crazy. Like I wouldn't have done that. But now I'm like so happy to like be on top, touching myself. You want to throw a toy in there? Great. Let's do that too. But I think that a lot of people are like, you said 10 years into a relationship, 20 years. And they're like, my partner doesn't see me like that. That's Mm -hmm. my partner could never watch me touch myself like that or use a toy. And it's like, just try just yeah. suggest it. I don't think it's so easy. I don't think everybody is just like reaching into their drawer and pulling out a dildo. Like, watch me. Look, watch me do this. But I think that there are baby steps to it that you can take. Mm-hmm. Just touch yourself once when you're on top of somebody. And it doesn't matter if somebody's like, he sees me as the mother of his children. And it's like, yeah, you could do that. And also masturbate while you have sex with somebody. Yeah. He'll see you yeah. as that too. I think mutual masturbation is one of the most underrated sexual acts. Wow. And you can actually make your partner go first. Like tell your partner, like, I want to see what you do when you touch yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, make them go first. Mm-hmm. Like they're going to think that's really sexy. You're talking dirty to them a little bit. It feels really confident to do. So you have them them go first and then it gives you a little bit of confidence for like you to try it out on yourself but we've asked men about this because so many women have said that like oh I don't want to I don't want to touch myself I feel so self-conscious okay. and again it goes back to the like would we make a man feel bad for touching his penis or wanting his penis touch like no obviously yeah. not but we've asked a lot of men anyways like what would you think if your partner was touching herself <laughs> they overwhelmingly are like it's incredibly hot I want to watch this yeah, 100 <laughs> like, awesome yeah <laughs> I also like not everybody drinks but alcohol can be a little helpful here I just feel like those loose nights like when you're <laughs> just like really have that going on like not drunk but uh-huh. I feel like I usually start that stuff after like a night when we've been out a little this bit. sounds like one of the like audios for the app now, like Ashley's loose night. <laughs> yeah, it is and hard. I know it's not everybody's story, but I just even with my partner now, like the first time we brought out a vibrator, I want to validate that it's not so easy, even as yeah. someone who owns a sex toy company. Yeah, you know, like there was one charging the first night we ever hooked up. Whatever, we didn't use it, but it was like it's in the room. You know, mm-hmm. he knows that's a part of my life. But I just want to tell people that are like, I could never. It's like it's not that it's so easy for anybody, you know, even if you have a top level of comfort with somebody, like it can take a minute to warm up to that. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I talk openly about the fact, like I've been doing this as a career for so long. I've been with my husband Xander for 16 years now. And there are times during sex where I want to ask for something. And I still to this day Mm -hmm. find myself feeling a little bit embarrassed or shy or Mm -hmm. nervous. So it's like we're dealing with years and decades of socialization that Mm -hmm. has taught us not to speak up and 
that we are too complicated and we're asking for too much. So that socialization doesn't just go away. Yeah. So like, it's okay if you're feeling nervous, your palms are sweating right now. You're like, I don't know how I could do this, but so let yourself feel that it's okay. And try to push yourself a little bit because it's worth it. Mm -hmm. I do want to talk a little bit more about like having these partners for like 10 years that think they're DJing it the right way and they're just killing it. <laughs> and you're just like, I don't know how to tell you this. You're not doing it right. So mm -hmm. like what advice would you have? Cause obviously you don't want to tell somebody you've been doing the wrong thing for all these yeah. years. So like, do you have like better advice for how to just like pivot a little bit? Okay. I'm going to give you guys two options. I'm going to start with the hard one. <laughs> this one's way harder to do at first, but you're going to have faster results from it. So option number one is to come clean to your partner and have a conversation with them where you do admit to faking it. I know that's going to freak people out just hearing that right now. So hear me out for a minute. But I think what's important to recognize is that you started faking orgasms for really good reasons. Like mm -hmm. you felt like that was the easiest thing to do. You wanted it to seem like, oh, we're connecting so much and we're compatible and I'm, I'm super easy. I don't take a lot of time or effort or energy. Like nobody starts faking orgasm to mess with their partner down the road. It's not like you're like, I know what I'm going to do. Right, right. I'm going to start faking them now. And in 20 years, I'm going to tell them, guess what, fucker? Like I've been faking the whole time. Like nobody does it for yeah. bad reasons. So I think you can have a conversation with your partner where you say like, hey, I need to talk to you about something. This is really hard for me to acknowledge, but I want you to know that like I have been faking orgasms and tell them the reasons. Like I felt pressure from a young age. I've done this my whole life. I felt like something was wrong with me. I've never had an orgasm, whatever it is. Uh -huh. So your partner is going to have some feelings. Like you're admitting something to them. It is going to be tough. Like you're going to have to sit with those feelings, but really being able to reassure your partner, like I didn't do this to be mean to you or to mess with you. I'm not saying you've done anything wrong. Like this is on me. So again, this is going to be a tough conversation, but then you've got a clean slate from there and you can say, Hey, I really want us to have a sex life where we're both being authentic and real with each other and like having a good experience. So you can start fresh and start from there. So if you had a heart attack listening to that and you're like, Vanessa, you've lost your mind. There's no way I'm having that conversation. That's where the second option comes in, which is like, it's a lot easier to do, but it is going to take longer to notice any sort of difference from it. So you can tell your partner, Hey, I've been noticing lately, even when I'm on my own, that my body just isn't responding to the things that it used to respond to. Yeah. And this is a great thing to say to your partner because it is true. Like our bodies change. The things that we liked 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we may not like so much anymore these days. And especially if you've gone through like pregnancy, if you're going through menopause or premenopause, anything like that, like bodies just change. So it's not a lie to say something like that. So you can tell your partner like, and I, I like saying even on my own, because I think that like, Totally. makes it feel a little bit softer uh, absolutely. too. Absolutely. And we all evolve. I used to like to read porn. Now I like to watch porn. I never liked an air pulse type vibrator at all. I was like, it's too much. Now I love it. It's my favorite mm -hmm. thing in the world. So our bodies do evolve. Yeah, absolutely. And so these are conversations that we should be having with our partners and, and giving the space for things to change. But yeah, if you tell your partner, like I've been noticing that it's, yeah, it's just not feeling the same lately. And so I would love for us to explore different techniques that we can try out together. And like, I want to try some new stuff on you. I want you to try some new stuff on me. So you introduce this element of just like being more playful and experimental in the bedroom and include your partner too. So let's say you're giving them a hand job, like try two different ways of moving your hand and be like, do you like it better when I do this one mm -hmm. or when I do this one? And then have him flip it around and, you know, he tries it out on you. So it's the same. You're still introducing the idea of like trying new things, but you're not coming clean with the full truth. I think there's maybe also somewhere in between that might resonate with people. The first one did take my breath away and it depends yeah. on the delivery, but the like, I've been faking orgasms our entire relationship could be damaging yeah, you know what I mean your partner's gonna have feelings yeah like that could really feel like even if they're the most understanding person in the world they are feeling like they have not been able to please you they feel like you both have been living a lie even if they're not calling you a liar like mm -hmm. I think it could be hard to move past but I also to your point you're like you start fresh you start from square yeah. one but I don't know I think everybody has to think about what type of partner they have and how they would like yeah. digest this information but it's like it hurts me to think of even telling someone I love that you know what I mean mm -hmm. so I feel like there's like a middle ground or like a softening of I've been faking every orgasm for 10 years feels like holy shit you I know just, we should I have just... done this in front of a therapist <laughs> right <laughs> yeah, yeah that's so, definitely a good option for I sure. think about it in the reverse of somebody saying it to me I would be like what are you as a person 
Mm -hmm. to have just like withheld this from me. And what do you think about me? Do you think I can't handle this? You think I can't be better? I can't change And Just all these things are exploding that probably most of it isn't even true. Yeah. I mean, that's why I think if you are going to go that route, I think it's really important to focus on yourself. Like I made the decision, you know, this is how I was feeling. Led you to believe this. Yeah. You know, this is what was coming up for me. And yeah, it is like, it's not the right fit for everybody for sure. Mm -hmm. And not the right fit for every relationship. But I do think there is something powerful about Mm -hmm. honesty and about sharing that. But yeah, for most people, I think they're going to want to go to the second option. (laughs) I still think you get there. Like you don't need to offer that much explanation. It's like, you know, I love you and I love having sex with you. And, Mm -hmm. but for some reason, I feel like I'd like to try some other things to give me some pleasure. You know, I feel a little different down there. You know, we also have like one of our best selling guide that we have is called our ultimate foreplay guides, where we really have like tons and tons of different techniques and they're illustrated and super fun. I've got to give you guys a copy so you Mm -hmm. can check them out. But doing something like that, where you buy that and you're like, Hey, I found something fun for us on the internet today. Like you don't even have to talk about orgasm. It's just like, let's try out these techniques with each other and then you give your partner real feedback when you're trying that out. And mm-hmm. what a fun activity. Yeah. Yes. Fun homework. <laughs> right. Your website, by the way, is so great. I was perusing it a little bit more today oh, and she has great tips and guides. But like, yeah, for our activity night, instead of going out to dinner, we just get to go home and I'll run through the list of dick sucking techniques. You tell me what feels good. How fun is that? <laughs> yeah. It's a very good date night. Yeah. I love the idea of that. And I do think it's a little scary to tell somebody like, oh, by the last three years we're alive. But like, I just changed my mind and something new feels good or I want to try something that feels good that's different is mm-hmm. so much easier to me. Again, if you involve your partner in it too, like I want to try some new things on you. On you I found well. some tricks that I want to try on yeah. you. And like, you're going to, you know, you're going to explore and discover new things about your partner too. So it just makes the whole process feel so much more fun and exciting. Yeah. And if they push back on option two, then you hit them with the, well, guess what? I've been faking it for 10 (laughs) years, motherfucker. (laughs) Right. You don't want to burn your Trump card, but the first, right. You just, you keep that in the back pocket and you're like, well, I've been faking orgasms for years. And then then the marriage is over. Yes. (laughs) And then they look at you and they're like, that's stupid of you. Okay. I don't feel stupid. You're stupid. (laughs) I wanted to touch on men a little bit just because we sit here and joke, men come every time and it's not the truth. And we want to focus on women's bodies in this episode. That's more what our podcast is about. But like, I just don't want any A, men listening or B, women who have partners, if we're talking about straight relationships or male on male relationships, but that have relationships where the man is not always coming and that's Mm -hmm. a problem in the relationship. Yeah, like I was saying, this is something that's becoming more and more common these days that men are struggling with it as well. So I think it actually opens up a really great opportunity for couples to just like have an honest conversation about it and to realize like, yeah, orgasm Mm -hmm. isn't necessarily like a super easy thing for everybody or in every season of life. Like one of the main causes for difficulty orgasming is being on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medications, you know? So there's just like a great opportunity to have a conversation and say like, okay, what can we do together to make sure that sex feels fun and intimate and connecting and enjoyable for both of us, like regardless of what's going on with orgasm? Yeah. I just wanted to acknowledge that because I don't, I feel like that can feel isolating. We're like, every man comes every Mm -hmm. time and Uh there's guys and then their female partners who are like, not over here. Yeah. And it's tough. We oversimplify male sexuality. We're just like, oh men, they're always horny. They always want it. They always come. And then we make female like sexuality way more complicated. And it's like, you know, we're, we're both somewhere in the middle. Like men are much more complex than we give them credit for when it comes to orgasm, when it comes to desire. Like we actually talk a lot about men's desire. We found in our audience that in male female relationships in 45% the woman is actually the one who has a higher sex drive. Yeah. But I people never it. talk about that. Right, we right. always think like the guy's supposed to be the one who always wants it and definitely wants it more than her. So it's yeah, just another way that we make men seem like they're just so simple. Well, we come across this a lot and we've had Dr. Ian Kerner on a couple times to talk about that topic because that makes women feel bad mm-hmm. when you're feeling like your partner doesn't want to fuck you all day every day spontaneously yeah. all the time. Yeah. So like the narrative hurts everybody. It does. Yeah. I mean, you see so many like reels on Instagram. I just saw one the other day that like the woman was like, things I do that turns my husband on. And then she's like, breathing, walking, taking a sip of water. You You have been together for four months. (laughs) Spontaneous desire face. Yeah. Yeah. And then we hear from people in our community of like, 
God, it, it makes me feel like something is so wrong with me or our relationship that my husband isn't, you know, jumping on me because I'm, you know, breathing sexy or yeah, like that. breathing it's sexy. Just- <laughs> I cannot relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to talk about if you're a person who has found your orgasm on your own, mm-hmm. like let's say with the, a vibrator, or, you know, your hands, like, but you still are like not quite able to get there with a partner, like. You know it's your clitoris, for example, most likely. Or maybe you're doing something that's like our Alice in Wonderland. It's penetrative and it's clitoral stimulation as well. But you're like, how do I translate this into a human? Mm -hmm. And I'll start by kind of saying like one thing is like if you're using a vibrator all the time, I recommend taking a break and using your own hands too. And that's something that like I feel like I've done recently. And this is from people that want nothing more than to sell you sex toys. So (laughs) like, I just want to be honest about it. Like you should have it all and you should do it all. But I think like for me, I had to realize that like, this is what I like with the hand from myself Mm -hmm. Uh that now it's something that like my partner does a lot. And this is like the most I've done that in this relationship. And he goes down on me too. And we have like great sex and all that stuff too. But it was like, here I am 40 years old. And I feel like this was only as of late that I kind of had to like, yeah. Figure it out manual. So you it's have like, to switch up the type of pleasure that you're getting. There's no such thing as vibrator addiction, but like we have a video on our app for me and Kerner. So these are his words, but there's no such thing as vibrator addiction, but like you can get addicted to a certain level of stimulation and it's important to just switch like that up. accustomed to it. Yeah. Like, Addiction is yeah. a strong word, but like, yeah, I like the word accustomed, accustomed to it. Reliant on it. Yeah. Like I don't, I watch porn one out of every 10 times I masturbate or I yeah. read porn. So I'm used to that kind of stimulation some of the time. Mm-hmm. I use my imagination most of the time. I use a toy pretty much all the time now but <laughs> I you got a lot of testing this morning I used two toys I was using one and then I switched but I was a solo hand masturbator for majority of my life okay. Well, and I yeah. asked a question and answered it, but like, let's see. I well, want to no, hear. From I think you. talking about vibrators is really important because there is a lot of vibrator fear mongering that goes on out there. Like, you can't get <laughs> addicted to a vibrator. <laughs> but I think I like the word accustomed to as well. Like, you just, your body kind of gets used to that. And what I think it plays a really big role in that too is like, masturbating with a vibrator for most women, it kind of is a pretty lazy experience. It's like you turn it on, you put it there and you're just kind of like waiting until the the vibrator like does its thing. And so it just gets you used to being a little bit passive Mm -hmm. during sex. And again, that level of intensity and stimulation that you can't get from a hand or from a mouth. So I think women need to be thoughtful about how they want to have their orgasms. So if you're like, I love my vibrator. It gives me the best orgasms. That's just how I want to orgasm. Then your task is going to be getting comfortable using a vibrator with your partner. And there are lots of women like vibrators are amazing for people who have chronic pain or, you know, maybe they have a low sensitivity or there are lots of different reasons why you might want to just have all your orgasms from a vibrator. And that's great. And you might be somebody who's like, yeah, I love my vibrator, but I would also like to orgasm from hands or from my partner's mouth or, you know, whatever it is. And so if that's the case, the best thing to do is just switch it up. So I say like very rough guideline, don't use your vibrator more than like half the time, like practice doing it in other ways. So if you're able to orgasm like with your hands, you're going to find it a lot easier to orgasm with your partner from their hands and then from their mouth too. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is my story. I used the Debbie last night and like blew my mind. And I mean, it was incredible, but like, I just, I don't want to do it every night. And especially yeah. kind of even, <laughs> <laughs> I got to stop. Right, right is like, I can't relate. I'm so deep in it. <laughs> it's our air pulse suction vibe. But I also like, it's never too late to to start mixing it up. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I would have, when did I first come from my own hand? T- two summers ago? Like it's been <laughs> it recent. Blew my mind when like, she told I'm me. 40 years old. I'm, so it's just kind of like my whole masturbation experience was vibrator and I still use my vibrators all the fucking time and that's you know our livelihood but like I just started to use my own hands more and now it's just like that's what I do a lot and now I'm like incorporating the oral sex bag now we're doing both we're really doing it all but I have to tell you something I masturbated to the thought of someone going down on me Whoa. And I don't Cute. like that at all. I don't mm. care about it. It's a, I don't care. I, I masturbate to actually giving blowjobs to other people. <laughs> so listen, you change, you could change and change your mind. <laughs> it's it's never too, too late. Way. Did it like, take you a while to learn how to use your hands? Like a, a little bit. It was a little bit of a learning curve. And I, I also just like, 
took more time to like get turned on, think mm-hmm. about stuff, touch my own body, you know, for have foreplay with myself. But I will say, I think that's also important to do with your vibrator too. Uh-huh. You know, what I tried to do, I said this a few years ago where it was like, I think it was a New Year's resolution. Like I wanted to fuck myself better. Like I really I wanted to just not be that. cold you yeah. know, not warmed up at all, not <laughs> turn that, like temperature. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. Like I'm going to incorporate more blankets. In yeah, my I want to have more socks on. <laughs> no, like, like a cold open. Like I wanted to even with my vibrator in my bed, like years ago, I was like, I want to at least be thinking some sexy thoughts. I yeah. want to have something going on. So it isn't so lazy. So it's not just like immediate. I was like, totally cold, not, and then I just stuck a vibrator on my clit. Like I wanted to at least kind of get in more of a zone, you know, set a mood because I think it all helps to have better sex with a partner. Oh, for sure. The way that we masturbate really affects the way that we show up with a partner for people of all genders. Mm -hmm. So I think being thoughtful about how you show up in your time with yourself is really, really important. And for some people, there can be a, a transition period where you're learning how to use your hands. Like a lot of people will say, I tried to use my hands and I felt nothing. And so I freaked out and went back to the vibrator. But that's Mm. totally normal. Like you you might need some time. It could be weeks. It could even be months if you've been using a vibrator for a really Uh long time, like every single time. So don't freak out if that happens to you. Just give yourself some time to adjust. I never heard you describe it as like a cold open because I didn't really know that's how you like really felt. Because I did it only manually for so long with Mm, my hands. I always had to fantasize. I didn't have this direct clitoral stimulation with something sucking and vibrating on my clit. I always did it with my hands. So I had to like fantasize always. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize Mm -hmm. that was like your experience. Like I would always be turned on and then I'd masturbate. It wasn't like I'm masturbating to be turned on because this is the the thing I'm doing today. Yeah. It wasn't all the time like that. You know, I mean, I'd play music. I don't really do music anymore. Like I feel like even I have like swap places, but (laughs) so yeah, I mean, if we want to get really granular with it, I mean, what do we tell a partner if all you've been doing is having penetrative sex? Like this is what you've been doing. You've been faking it. Mm -hmm. what do you say to them? Like put your fingers on my clit. Like how do we, like what tools can we give people that are like, wait, 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 tell me what to do. (laughs) So I think overall what we need to do is focus on broadening what we're doing for sex. So Mm -hmm. most of us, like we really overemphasize intercourse. We feel like that's the be all end all. That's the main event kind of thing. And especially in long-term relationships, we see couples doing fewer and fewer things together. It's like 30 seconds of half-hearted foreplay and then you're on to the intercourse. Mm -hmm. So we need to like expand the repertoire again. So the ultimate foreplay guides can be a great way to do that or initiating it with your partner first. Like I always love like initiating something with your partner because it feels like a softer way for somebody who feels a little insecure saying like, hey, can you go down on me tonight? Like Uh just tell your partner like, you know what I'm really in the mood for? Like I want to go down on you tonight. So go down on them and then say, all right, my turn. Something Mm -hmm. like that. You know, Uh so you're introducing in a really sexy way the idea of doing more activities in the bedroom. So it doesn't have to be this like um hey I really need us to Mm. focus more on my clit you know it's like you don't need to make it be this cold and clinical thing can be a very sexy like I want to have your dick in my mouth right now like get over here kind of thing and like putting their hand there you know like I think like we always say we're talking about a guy he's doing what the last girl liked you know Mm -hmm. so they like instruction hopefully you're with someone that's like receptive and cares about your pleasure tell him you like back and forth Tell them faster, harder, Mm -hmm. less, higher. Like, it's just, I think people worry that's going to hurt their ego. And it's like, if that does, I would maybe consider the type of person that you're with. But like, I really feel like you should be with someone who cares about your pleasure and is like more than happy to like take those instructions and like hopefully giving them in a gentle way. And that's why I really like the the little game that I mentioned earlier about comparing two techniques. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it makes it feel fun and playful, but it gives you and your partner really great feedback. Like, do Uh you like it better when I try this technique or this technique? Do you like it better when I do this speed or this speed? Like this pressure or this pressure? Uh Uh-huh. You're like having fun with each other, playing around, but you're getting this very valuable feedback of like, ooh, that's what feels good. And positive reinforcement we talk about on the show all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. you're so good at that. I want so much more of that thing that you did just don't stop doing this thing it's like I'm getting compliments and I'm amazing at this who wouldn't want to keep doing that you know Mm -hmm. I just think that like being fingered feels so good and having somebody go down on you and people that are like I can't 
orgasm from penetrative sex, well, then you need to warm the engine up a little bit more. You know, the yeah. best orgasms I will ever have in my life is when I smoke a little weed. I can masturbate longer. So like the session of fantasizing and like pleasuring myself is so long. So the orgasm is insane. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you just have more foreplay and you warm it up a little bit longer, it will be easier to have an orgasm. Well, yeah. right. And I feel like we've talked about that language too. It's just like, I love what you're doing. I just want to do it a little bit longer. Yeah. I feel like we cannot stress positive reinforcement enough, like more of that mm -hmm. instead of like, don't do this. Nobody yeah. wants to hear that. Yeah. Imagine. And I think it can also be really beneficial. Like if you, you know, if you guys are in that pattern of intercourse is like the, you know, the main event for you, have you have an orgasm first, like have your partner go down on you or touch you. And that way you can move into intercourse and still have fun and connect and, you know, play around with your partner, but not feel that pressure of like, Oh God, I'm going to have to fake it. Like, or is he going to come too fast or, you know, what's going mm -hmm. on? Like, That's all we did this past weekend. Was all like, I do is get out of the way first. <laughs> well, well, I know I like that's a funny way to put it. Like, get out of the way. <laughs> well, we've taken care of me, so you yeah. just do whatever. I'll be here. Sometimes I need a second because I'm sensitive. sensitive. I just yeah. came really hard. I'm like, well, give me a minute. You know what I mean? But I feel like we just do that a lot. You know, I it's like he's focused on my pleasure and. He knows he's going to come once he penetrates me. So it's yeah. like we do that first. And I, so I love that tip. I thought that was like a totally normal thing everybody was doing. I did oh, too. No. I mean, I, the Raina Greenberg you special is like, what? Oh. I'll tell you what I do every single time. Like a little bit of a blowjob. I just like suck a dick a little bit. And I get on top and I have my orgasm. And I'm, I'm like, you can get on top of me now and do whatever you need to do to finish this off. Oh, I was saying he's like, you come from oral from and then have sex. Yeah. Oral slash yeah. fingering slash a combo of both or whatever. And then he, before he even penetrates you at all. That's why I didn't like people going down on me for so long. Cause I, I came too fast. And then I was just like, can this be over please? Yeah. But again, this but is yes. like, there's definitely times where it's like, okay, I need like a second, you know? Yeah. If, but he if can, you, he Cause can you're like, like vibrating the rest from of your it. body, yeah. touching you, cooling you down. Like, yeah, it is very common for women to get a little hypersensitive, like right after we've had orgasms. Yeah. So you might need a minute or two, but I just think like female orgasm has been deprioritized for so long. Like we should get to come first. Yeah. <laughs> like, let yeah. us come first. And it actually can be a huge, huge confidence booster for a guy too. Like he has his own set of insecurities about how long he's going to last and is he going to be able to get it up and keep it up. And if he knows that he made you feel good and gave you an orgasm, like he's going to be able to go into intercourse, like feeling even more confident totally. too. And then they, sometimes you can do it after. Like, Absolutely. You know, I guess there's a world in which some guys are just too spent, you know, once they come, but like <laughs> you, I've you had a lot careful. of, <laughs> you have one of those kinds of partners, yeah. Yeah. but I've had a lot of incidences where yeah. they have finished and then I've most likely like getting fingered or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I just, I don't know. I guess I kind of want to make sure everybody knows you have all these options too yeah, that are like before. completely normal. Yeah. And like, I didn't really roll like this in my twenties. So like, uh, especially for our younger listeners, maybe never considered yeah. that like they could have a finger or an oral orgasm, full blown, no penetration, and then have sex with their partner. So yeah. I just want to let you guys know, get Absolutely. to it. Another option that I never considered for so long is that like you can go backwards in the bases. Like we have such this idea in our heads uh -huh. of like, oh, it's supposed to be hands and then mouths and then intercourse. But I actually love mixing it up and like yeah. have intercourse for a while, take a little bit of a break, which is also great for a partner who's, you know, can orgasm a little bit too quickly. Yep. Take a break and then he fingers you or goes down on you or uses a toy on you or watches you pleasure yourself, yeah. you have the orgasm, go back to the intercourse. Like you can go back and forth as many times as you want. I love Good this idea. conversation. <laughs> Fun. I feel like sometimes stuff that feels normal to a lot of couples or people mm -hmm. like may seem a little foreign to other people. So it's like, I like giving people permission to do this and be like, this is like a way to Mix it up. I yeah. never thought about that. For yeah. most of my sex life, it was like, oh no, like we've had. Has to be an order. Yeah, we're, we're doing it in order. <laughs> and once you've had intercourse, it's like you don't go backwards from there. But that's actually some of the most fun sex I have now is like mixing it up and like, yeah, let's, that sounds so fun. Let's go back. Let's and take a little break. Your partner wants to pleasure you. I think there was less information back then yeah. to, given to men that women could orgasm during sex. Men were just yeah. like, this is about me. And I think there's so much more information now. And I, can think of very few partners ever in the last 10 years that like weren't so turned on by me having an orgasm. It was really important to them. Like they got off because I got off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do think that your partner really wants to please you. And so you should allow them the tools to do that. I Absolutely. completely agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, so many women are so scared of this. And like, of course there are some assholes out there who are just having sex for their pleasure, but then you shouldn't be having sex with those people. Yeah. If, if that, if that guy doesn't your vibrator care. For real though. Yeah. If he doesn't care about your 
pleasure and your experience, he doesn't deserve access to your body. But I do think the vast totally. majority of men like want to pleasure their partners. They want to know what makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. They want you to have a good experience. So I think reminding ourselves of that. And if you're in a relationship, like even ask your partner that outside of the bedroom, just say like, Hey, sometimes I feel really self-conscious in the bedroom of like how much time I take or how much effort it takes. And like, I just, you know, want to check in with you and see what mm -hmm. that's like. Like you're, I'm sure your partner is going to tell you like, I don't care about yeah. that. Like it makes me feel good. Now, yes. as, with that as well, like I think another important thing to recognize is sex is not about us giving each other the exact same amount of time and energy. Like nobody's keeping track. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I went down on you right. for four right. minutes and 30 seconds. So I only get four minutes and 30 seconds in return. Right? The like, card, yeah, we're no. not keeping track of it. Yeah. So even if it does take you longer to orgasm than it takes your partner, like, that's not a problem. What makes great sex isn't that you've had exactly the same mm -hmm. amount of time spent on you. What makes great sex is that you've both had a great experience. I love that point too. Because we, we all get into our heads like that. No matter what yeah. length or strength of a relationship, you still get and you're like, God, he's been doing that for a while. Yeah. I feel bad. Mm -hmm. And it, it comes from like love for them. You're like, I don't want to them to be tired or inconvenience them. But like you said, like chances are they haven't even thought about that. Yeah. I guess if it's been an hour, a good hand can get a little tired. You get a carpal tunnel, <laughs> but I think it's like, they really aren't thinking like about that the way that we maybe. Oh no, yeah. And, and yeah, we might notice the time like, okay, it has been a little bit of time. <laughs> but like, you know, <laughs> he takes a break from fingering you to be like, your jaw gets sore pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. You're shocked. <chocolate. laughs> it's like when you're with somebody that you care about, like you're going to do that for them mm -hmm. anyways. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it took time or some effort. Like you want them to enjoy yeah. themselves. So Absolutely. Let your partner give you that gift. The days of like a guy that doesn't care about a woman's pleasure, I just feel like they're like, on the way out, if not completely over. Yeah. Like I think every guy wants to think he can please a woman. Like yeah. that's, you know what I mean? And then like even his guy friends want to gas him up like, damn, you must be laying that pipe down. You know what I mean? Like I think it's <laughs> He just, wants to play you like a fiddle. <laughs> let him. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah. you think that guy's listening? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Me too. I really hope so. <laughs> Did he ever find, like you never told him or anything? I never told him. I never yeah. spoke to him again after that night, but I would be delighted. <laughs> Delighted if he was, I, he was like, wait, that was you me. did not play me like a fiddle. Well, I would love nothing more because obviously he would know it was about him. Like, he was like, I did say that. To that her. was my that was my line back in two thousand five. Well, th shout out to him for changing, yeah. you know, your whole trajectory. He really did. <laughs> Is there any other things that you get asked all the time, or you feel like a really like hot, important tip about faking orgasms that you want to give? You know, one thing that we haven't talked about is like a very easy way to experience more pleasure during intercourse Ooh. is touching your clitoris or having your partner touch your clitoris. We kind of like it. touched on it here and yeah. there, but I think so many women don't realize that that's an option. I remember thinking it's just so pornographic and dirty and it's like, yeah, it is. It's awesome. Yeah. When somebody gets to watch you do that and you also simultaneously get to feel that, every single straight man wants it. I, yeah. I, if, if, I'm just going to say it. I just, I feel confident in that stat. I don't think there's a man out uh -huh. there in the world that is like, Oh my God, guess what she did. And I guess he doesn't <laughs> like women because I just like every single guy loves this. We've pulled this as well. Think, okay, and like a hundred percent of men said that it was hot. And then we got a bunch of DMS from women who are like, but the way I masturbate is like weird. It's it's too fast. Or like I use this weird technique. And so we went back to men. We're like, okay, have you, <laughs> we went back. Have you ever seen a crazy there be, way? Like, a weird way of masturbating? And it was like a thousand percent. Okay, no. so I will tell you what I see <laughs> yeah. in porn a lot is that women are smacking their clit and they're just spanking <laughs> their own clit just over and over and over. <laughs> Not that spank. is crazy to me. <laughs> but listen, if that's what gets you there, but I feel like it's the opposite. Like they're trying to not come in porn. So like, let me do this crazy thing. I'm just rubbing it in a circle. Yeah. And also yeah. men request it on the menu all the time. Touch yourself. Yes. Yeah. So I think like everybody's different, but I do think a great place to start with touching yourself could be during doggy style because they're yes. not staring right exactly. at you. So I think that's probably what I started doing. Like, okay. you know, I have access to it. They're behind me and I'm touching myself. Like I think it's kind of high level if you're yeah. riding them on top and you're just like Whoo! that's one of my favorite recommendations too they okay. can't see you or you can do they can't see you. like <laughs> reverse cowgirl too can yes. be great if you're because a cowgirl tends to be one of the best positions
options for female orgasm, like without touching the clitoris, but the you can best. flip around backwards, uh-huh. you know, so they're not seeing they you. don't know what even, you're doing. Even the position that you were mentioning, kind of like your partner behind yes. you, you're on your side, yep. like in a kind of spooning position. Oh, I have to do it. That can work. Come. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. can work too. I think those are like the ways to transition into like the full frontal <laughs> yeah. view. You know, what's so funny is I've had, I've been on the bottom like in missionary and I've had guys request it and I'm like, <laughs> God, I don't have access to it. Like, <laughs> you know what? You're smashing it. I you, break, you break a nail. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I can't up. get into a rhythm because you're smashing against There's it. There's like a gel extension down there now. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. I get into a rhythm. I get like one full turn and they're just like slam. I can't. Turn, I've, slam. I've never... <laughs> This is for you. It's not for me. You know what I mean? Like, it's not for yeah. me to feel good. It's for you to watch it. Well, in, in that case, like, I feel like that's a great opportunity for a cock ring. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So they can be, which we are releasing Stay one. Tuned. Just Ooh. a spoiler alert. Yeah, we'll have that in the new year. So we didn't mention that, but I feel like yeah. that is a that great a toy great as option. well. And it's mm-hmm. maybe a little more, again, of that. I mean, whatever. Every guy might feel differently about putting a ring around his cock, but it, that can feel, that was one of my early on toys that I was using with a partner when I was in my 20s. And it feels a, a little little less intense than like bringing a big old orgasm like it really yeah. is a good partner toy totally. yeah yeah absolutely that can be fun too yeah and even one other great little trick is just try putting a little bit of lube on your clitoris too because if there are certain positions where your body like missionary is a great one where your bodies are pushed close together mm-hmm. and you can get some of that action with your clitoris grinding against their body or also cowgirl if you're bent over a little bit okay so if you put some lube on your clitoris it can make it like glide Slicker. a little bit easier and you get even more like really great clitoral stimulation that wow. is a great, great tip, tip. Because I feel like even if you are really wet, which, you know, I have been ever since I got off the pill, but it's still kind of staying more localized in the hole. Yeah, <laughs> so, it doesn't travel up. So I, I'm like, I mean, you could grab it and slap it on there, slap your clip. But I just think, like, that's a great tip to that's get... That's what they're doing. <laughs> slapping <laughs> the lube on it. <laughs> <laughs> a window washer moment. I think it's a great tip. I love this tip. So I was like sleeping with this guy and he, he was on top of a missionary and he was just like grinding in a rotating position. You could tell he really thought he was doing something. And it really was taking me out of it. And, like I could just, all I could think about was like, what is this looking from behind with your little butt? Just like, like grinding yeah. in a circle. And it's, I think that with a little bit of lube, it would have felt better. Yes. I couldn't call. quite get there. It was like a sneeze. I couldn't like get to the hump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lube can really intensify sensation and mm-hmm. just make it so much easier to get there and like feel more sensation. We got to send you home some of our lube. Oh, it's yes. really elite. Yeah. We'll send um, you the goodie bag. Yeah. We'll give, we'll give you all the things. <laughs> okay. Well, I love this once again. Vanessa, this is so wonderful. I just think, you know, we've been doing this for so many years and we really feel like how is there more to talk about and there really is and mm-hmm. you've like brought so much like fun new stuff to the table and I'm sure this will be like really impactful for our listeners so thank you oh thanks for having me guys I'm oh. so glad I really was like bring me in coach like <laughs> I'm ready for this you were really excited and I was like I was. yep I'm really we're, we're doing it this is so great <laughs> well you have like a wealth of information and everything on your website and your Instagram is fantastic so tell people where they can find you the book the website Instagram everything You can find us on Instagram. We're at Vanessa and Xander at Xander with an X. We're pretty active over there. And you can find all of our like guides and courses and link to the website there too. But our website is vmtherapy.com. It's my initials, V-M-T-H-E-R-A-P-Y.com. We have those ultimate foreplay guides. We have next level intercourse. We have sex challenges for couples, like tons of fun stuff there. And then we have our own podcast, which is called Pillow Talks that you can find wherever you listen to podcasts. Amazing. Yes. Okay. And you guys know where to find all of our sex toys, including <laughs> the new products we talked about today at vibesonly.com. And you can also follow Vibes Only on Instagram. And of course, girlsgottoeat.com. Probably no tickets left for the live shows, though. You snooze, you lose. But girlsgottoeat.com and Girls Gotta Eat Podcast, both on Instagram and TikTok. I'm Ash Hess. Raina is Raina.Greenberg. And we're wishing you all incredible orgasms, both alone and with a partner. Have a good week and lots of orgasms. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you.